Welcome to Portsmouth, where six players are out to bat today, all looking to hit big scores and looking to bowl out their opponents. It's all about the darts, of course, here at the Modus Super Series as we enter the fifth and final day of qualification in this test match version of darts. Well, this was exactly what happened on the opening day in Group C. Former BDO World Championship finalist Alan Norris finds himself pointless after day one, despite having opportunities to beat Alex Small here. Bob Moulinkamp has had a week of frustration so far at the live lounge. Four points after day one sees him in the mix, but only with a good day. John Brown's week has been a bit of a roller coaster so far. He'll be hoping to stay on it for one more day, though, after this. Joey Tenberg is two points off top spot and is looking for a finals night berth on debut. Alex Small came close to picking up the big prize in December. He'll be hoping to see a Saturday night return today. But everybody's talking about Jamie in Group C as Kenning's consistency sees him top on eight points. And out in the middle for his spin on yesterday's proceedings, it is Matt Edgar. Very good afternoon to you once again. And let's just describe what we saw in Group C yesterday because it was a type of day which just, it, it felt like it was swinging one way or another. I will stop the cricket puns at some point. But it, then in the end, we had two players that kind of just put themselves above the rest of the field. They did because somebody had to. It had to be somebody at the top of the table come the end, but I don't think anyone really commanded this table. I think this is completely up in the opening. I mean, I did say last night when we started Group B, looking back to Group C, that I don't think that there was anybody in here that will be concerning our Group A winner this week, Jim Long. We didn't see enough from the players yesterday to see someone really pull away. We do have a little bit of a cushion for Alex Small and Jamie Kelly at the top of the table, but that could completely flip-flop around if we get the same sort of level of play today. I mean, you look at the players that won four points in the examples of John Banner, Ron Moon and Gap, we know about the pedigree that Ron's got. And, and for John, it, it feels like it's been, I said it in the highlights package, a bit of a roller coaster week for him. It's been a case of when he's on it, he shows some really good stuff, but he's not been able to harbour that on a more consistent basis. Well, when you look at his week, Monday, Tuesday to Wednesday, he was putting six points on his average every day. So I was really excited to see John Brown come into this group, as I was with Joey Tenberg. I thought the two of them had really grown in to the experience as it's gone. But at times it wasn't happening. Joey Tenberg did treat us to that big performance yesterday when he broke the 100 average barrier for the second time this week. But I wouldn't be surprised... If one of those players on four points, or Joey, who's on six, it's a, a little bit less of a bold prediction when I put Joey in it as well. But don't be surprised if one of those players on four points comes through and actually qualifies today. That wouldn't shock me at all. Well, let's see how yesterday went from a numerical standpoint. These are the stats from day one. Jamie Kenning, the leader of the group going into the overnight and into today's session. And it tends to be the trend of the week where we look at the legs played and we correlate it with the breaks of throw. I genuinely can't remember a week where we've seen so many breaks. And it's what I've been saying up here on the balcony and in commentary all the time, that the players are presenting opportunities, and you can see here that the players are actually taking those opportunities as well. The bottom number there, though, the overall average, I said it felt down. It is. It's down. However, the checkout rate's not. That tells me that there's been a severe lack of scoring power in this group, especially when you look that there's the highest winning average there of 100 from Joey Tenberg. That normally brings up the overall average and just sort of gives it a little bit maybe of a misleading in the positive. But instead, without that sort of big average on there, this could have been in the 81. And so is that correlating the trend then? If you look at the, the low terms in terms of the averages and you look at that higher rate of checkout percentage, is that why we saw a lot of breaks? Because the players on throw may not have been scoring as well and so the opponents against the darts have been able to have an extra opportunity. When they have, they've taken it. Yeah, with the scoring powers down, there is going to be those opportunities to present itself, and that's why you'll probably see in situations where someone with a lower average will beat someone with a higher average. We've seen that quite a lot this week. The average is not exactly telling the story of the game as such, but... With all these things considered, the one thing it does is it opens a massive door of opportunity here for two people to get through to Saturday. Well, let's have a look and see what the bookies think about today's proceedings. And I think on a day like today, it's very intriguing to see what they say. Now, Jamie Kelling, Alex Moore, the two players and eight points, 
not a surprise that they're going out as the bookmakers' favourites. But is it a bit similar to Group B, where we may be looking at the middle of the pack, which could represent very, particularly Joey Tenberg there at five to one? Honestly, I don't know how comfortable I would be today with any of the players at those odds. I don't think anyone really represents a true value in terms of what we've seen so far from them. But So with that, we've got to look at where the value is in regards to what we see from them elsewhere and where they've been. Ron Mullenkamp, he's got a massive task to win this group, but 10 to 1 maybe is the value there. If you're looking for value, I think potentially today the best value is in those individual matches. Well, let's see what you've been thinking at home. This is the bet builder. These are some of the fancy tips that have been coming in on the uh, bookmaker lines over the last few minutes or so. Now, this is a 7.41 to 1 treble. Just talk us through some of those selections. And actually, do you agree with those selections? No. I don't like them, to be honest with you. So when I look at that and you look at the handicap betting mark in there, twice being very popular on Alan Norris to lose those. Yes, he wasn't his self yesterday. He lost all five matches. That was yesterday. Alan Norris isn't going to go through the card losing all five matches again. He's got too much pedigree and quality. And what he's probably going to do, you'll find that he's going to find something that works for him for maybe just a match or two matches. So I wouldn't be jumping on those handicap markets expecting a repeat of yesterday. If you're going to have a flutter, 18 plus B, gambleaware.org. But here at the Super Series, it's actually time to get the candles and the cakes out because it's about time we're going to celebrate a milestone moment here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth because the first game of our day between Alex Small and Joey Tenberg is going to be our 10,000th we have seen here at the Super Series and its predecessor tournament, the Live League. Now, we'll go through some of the other famous matches in those milestones. Funnily enough, you actually look at game 1,000 and game 9,000, it's exactly Exactly the same game between Scott Baker and Jared Cole and exactly the same result. It's funny how darts can work out like that. And Jamie Kellen in two of those iconic matches as well. And he's here this week. He's in this group. He's got a great chance of going through. Some really good matches there. I think the one that really stands out for me, though, is if you look at match number 6,000, Dan Reed, Graham Usher, two people that have really sort of embrace this experience and have sort of built their name around this. Graham Usher was sort of floating around and not really ever likely to get a tour card. He, he came on doing little bits, but I never thought he'd be one of the players that moved on to get a tour card. And then he was sort of the face of this last year. He was winning this on a regular basis. And then he's used that to move on to Q School and do well there, as I expect that Dan Reed will do in future years to come. Just quickly, who do you, you say Graham Usher was the face of 2022. Who do you think is the face of this in 2023? I know, I've put you on the spot there, haven't I? Oh, right, yeah? Apparently this guy is. But, they, but of course, but what I mean by that is, you saw Graham Usher really make his name for himself here. Do you feel like someone saw Graham get that tour card and say, do you know what? I want to be the main player in this competition. Every single player that walks through the doors. And I'd say every single player that walks through the doors, that is certainly on that younger generation as well, because this is a new product. It's a product that's really going to appeal to the younger generation, especially how it's viewed and how it's watched around the world, especially with the amount of social media reach and the appeal that it has on that side of things, because this is what that generation's growing up with, where I'm from the old sort of TV remote with the slippers in front of a one family TV and you watch what's on where nowadays you, they'll be sat around watching their own individual things. With that, we see people want to come here to the Super Series. This is a goal for them now where, again, when I was growing up, we didn't have that. Our goal was there was a world championship or pretty much nothing. So this is now a milestone event for a lot of those players. And I would definitely say there's players probably sat at home right now who would answer that question with definitely. Well, it is celebration time here at the Super Series because we're about to get our 10,000th match underway. It sees Alex Small against Joey Timberg. We're going to send the face of the Super Series or the self-proclaimed face of the, the Super The voice Series. today. Well, the voice of the Super Series. You took my link away. Right, the face of the Super Series is going to join the voice of the Super Series because alongside Matthew Edgar in the copy box is Chris Murphy. Hello, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Henry. Hello, everybody. Yeah, Matthew Edgar's behaviour. It's just not cricket, is it? But it is darts here at the Modus Super Series. And as Henry said, that landmark 10,000th match is about to take place between Joey Tenberg and Alex Small, the Welshman, winner of the Red Dragon Champion of Champions event. Some event to win that huge field, huge prestige. Previous winners, including Derwin Price and the man from The Hague. Joey Tenberg, 37 years of age, nicknamed First leg, it's Alex the to throw first. entertainer. Game on. 
And these scores will be called out by Charlie Corstafin, big premier referee. And it is, of course, 81. Friday, which means it is judgment day for all of the players left in the field looking to join Jim Long in Saturday's 95. finals night session. Matthew Edgar has made the long trip downstairs. I hope Matthew, you're going to be better behaved down here than you were up there. Well, you asked a question and you've got to go with the Group B winner of week 12, haven't you? That was the week to win. Yes. Now, Matthew Edgar will be playing again in the this series, next series. This series, this next series. month. So we will uh, have the opportunity to either suffer for longer One hundred. keep him quiet a little bit. When we speak about winners, though, I... Did bump into Jim Long this morning. One hundred and thirty-four supermarket. He was just getting a few groceries. He sticking around. So he went to the museum yesterday. Went for a little wander. He's going to go out for a practice this afternoon. One hundred and thirty-nine. Alec require one hundred and twenty. Some more sights of Portsmouth. Well, this would be a nice sight here in Portsmouth to kick off this encounter. 80. Joey requires seventy-four. Oh, couldn't quite complete the big finish and Tenberg gets an opportunity to clean up a three-figure combo of his own. On tops. 54. In the way. Alec requires yeah, Smashed 40. into that dart that was already in the big 20. Offers the opportunity here to Alec. Game shot on the first lay. Alec Small. A tiny bit of a trend continuing into today. Second leg. It's Joey to throw first. Game on. 100. Always goes for a long walk, Jim, you know. 177. Well, he's had a long wait to finals night. 140. But he'll know he's going to join him at the end of the day. And at the end of this group, he will know two of the players. Alex Small is hoping to be 85. one of them. But at the end of yesterday... His win over Joey Tenberg was pretty pivotal, wasn't it? They could have been in the opposite 83. position. The Dutchman won that game. It's just been a group of opportunity. I mentioned that up on the balcony, that if anyone can find their A game, which realistically they didn't do yesterday. When you look across the sort of stats and the, the numbers, we only ever broke the 90 average. 45. Twice. And both of those occasions, it was Joey Tenberg that did that. When you think about the amount of games that we have, one hundred. Joey two requires players, one hundred and thirty-three. He broke that twice. You'd have expected that a little bit more with the players that are on show. But when players are playing to their best of the ability, like to it does it. Offers opportunity, and I think Ron Mullenkamp can be very encouraged by that coming into today. 60. Well, the first start, the Joey second start rather, should 76. have been somewhere near there than where it was, resulting in the bounce out. And Tenberg does have a chance. 74 in the previous leg, Mr. Dart at top. 76 in this leg. Game shot on the second leg. And levels Joey up at one apiece. 3rd leg, it's Alex to throw first. Game on. Just one more thing on Jim Long. I think I may have... 60. A few little problems between him and Mrs. Jim Long because he was just asking me about like the area where he could go for a practice. I, I don't think Mrs. Jim Long was too impressed with the idea of going and playing a little bit of darts. But then I informed 100. him that there's actually a local well-stopped stopped dart shop nearby. And he goes, oh, can you go in there and get like, 60. darts and products and things? I says, yeah. What, in a dart shop? Who would have thought? <laughs> and I pointed out the direction it was. He was 100. very excited to go down and have a look at some darts products. Mrs. Jim Long didn't quite see the appeal. Well, let's see if we see Jim with some new clobber, some new equipment on Saturday night. 140. Alan Norris will be in action in the next match. He will be changing his equipment, visit after visit, like yesterday. 
60. Joey, you require 161. Not just the, darts, the eyewear as well. We had glasses on, glasses off. Yeah, disappointing day for Chuck Norris. 99. Basically in an impossible position. No points from five matches. 100. Joey, you require 62. Looking to bag a break. Has had darts to win every leg of the match so far, and we'll get a dart to win this leg. Game shot on the and third he does win leg. This leg. Joey Tembo. So advantage, the Dutch darter. They will now have the throw for 3 1. Yes, that is had darts to win every leg. Full leg. It's Joey to throw to first. Every leg. Game Twice on. he's hit, the other time he missed. And Small took advantage. He did open up well yesterday as well. 59. Game number one, a 90.49 average. Four from seven on the doubles in that one. He was by far, 95. statistics wise. The best performer. And not just in that opening game, I mean across the entire day. 42. One hundred and forty. A reminder of the positions. We saw the league table at the top of the show, but it's small and Kelling on eight. If Tenberg wins this match, he will join them. Kelling, sixty. Of course, will have will have his game in hand to complete. That is the next one against Alan Norris, who is bottom of the table on zero eighty one. And in between a lot of them, John Brown and Ron Mullenkamp, who will play each other in game three on four points. Do you think that is a particularly significant match? One of those players, forty three, kind of staying in touch with the other one, getting cut adrift a little bit. Absolutely, and then they've gone into that barrier of losing four matches. Sixty five. I always say it's your point of elimination, really. After that, you need a lot of fortune. It's out of your hands once you've lost four games of darts here. 120. Oh. Well, all he needed to do was hit a single Alex to leave a finish. 120. For a great dart. That's desperately unlucky. 80. It was in the treble. We call that 120 floor. It would have been on a really makeable outshot here as well, wouldn't he? 117. 41. Stuck in. I like to require Instead, 40. Small can cancel out the break. Game shot on the fourth leg. Exactly Alex that. Small. 16 data for 2 2. And that right there, that's the definition of unlucky. Unlucky is a word that really. Fifth leg, it's Alex to throw first. But Game on. I think that comes down to. The trainers and mentors I had when I was a coach, and they'd always hate it if you used the word unlucky because, and you hear it sometimes when people will miss a dart or a double and go, "Oh, it's unlucky." It, it's not unlucky. You've missed. That was unlucky. Ninety-five. Where it sort of just not penetrated the board. It splattered into the equipment. It was a well-thrown dart. It was just unfortunate that other factors 60. got in the way. If you've got a nice big open target and you miss it, nothing's going in the way. There was nothing unlucky about it. Unlucky would be 60. one of the lights breaking, swinging down and knocking your dart out of the way as it was flying through the air. 100. 100. It looks like it could be a turning 44. point of the match. Indeed it could be. And we've seen this from Alex Small throughout this group throughout yesterday. Times it had looked like his opponent was the one in control, but he would maybe get a bit of luck or they would miss. And then suddenly he'd get a spring in his step and reel off a couple of legs in double quick time. Players that play with that rhythm and freedom, they do need that little bit of confidence. We've got a bit of time to work it out here because Joey's trying 126. to... 126. Alex requires 65. Well, it's one of those shots where you go for the 18s for the right reason. But there's no massive benefit 33. of hitting the treble with your first start. You still need two trebles to leave a finish. If you get a single, then two trebles to leave a finish. Which is why you go that way. 83. He almost felt Alex like... Alex requires 32. That wasn't fair on Game that occasion, did And it Alex might not Small. feel fair at the moment because since that bounce out, Small has reeled off the last two legs. A second Sixth leg. straight it's Joey 16 to throw first. Data. Game on. And he's one away from moving to the summit 
of Group C on 10 points. And more importantly, 100. putting four points between himself and his opponent in this one. Easy one. One hundred and thirty-five. I think this is a big game in the context of the story of the week. But if this is 96. a defeat, he's got to play the the big picture. He's got to play that seven wins and just trust in the process. One hundred and thirty-seven. It can be so easy to go back and start reading the table and trying to play situation by situation, which. 56. Does Joey require 129. Match. 93. 134. Joey requires 36. A good bouncing from Joey. Game shot on the seat though. Joey Tembo. Really good leg of darts. Not allowing... Alex Small to have it easy. If you're going to win so it, Alex. Final leg. It's Alex to throw go first. Go and win it. Game on. The Welshman steps forward in this all important seventh leg. 100. And it's the definition of a Super Series four pointer. Should Small win, he moves that margin clear of his opponent. He goes top of the table on 10, 100. leaving Tenberg on six. If Joey takes the honours. He will join Small and Jamie 59. Kelly on eight points. Massive leg of darts in the very first match of the day. And a big opportunity there for two reasons. The 100. treble is visit, but the fact that he's also used the 19s. 19s. Putting that two on the end rather than 96. a four. Just makes it a little bit trickier to get out. It is a nine dart combo rather than a six. Falsy one. We have seen games twist and turn all the way through yesterday. 96. 25 matches we brought you. And one thing we learned about yesterday is it's not over until that final double goes in. 140. I like to require 150. Another in there. Oh, what a way to win it this would be. Double Game 18. Shot. Wow. And the match. An absolute Alex Small. Buster finish to a brilliant battle. And it's Alex Small who comes up with the big stuff in the end. A 4-3 success. Great game. Averages both around that 90 mark. But Small with a supersized outshot, that 150, winning it in a last leg decider and knowing that Joey Tenberg had been outstanding on doubles, waiting on a checkout of his own. Big, big win for Alex Small. He moves to the top of the table. Jamie Kelling looking to respond when he takes on the so far winless Alan Norris after the break.
Well, game 10,000 didn't really disappoint, did it? Alex Small getting the better of Joey Tenberg by four legs to three, doing so of a 150 finish. And that means he's the first player onto double figures in the Group C table. Jamie Kelling was the league leader going into today's action. He can go on to 10 points himself with victory against Alan Norris, who's looking to pick up his first victory of his campaign. Right, watching this one, Matt and Chris. Thanks very much, Henry. And it is about responding, isn't it, for Jamie Kelling, not just to match Small at the top of the table, but to do exactly what Small himself has just done and immediately open up a four-point gap between himself and the rest of the field after the first round of fixtures. That because John Brown... First leg, Mark it's Jamie to throw two first. Left to play can only Game get on. ...to six after this, and it will mean that pretty much straight away that the race is very much on and there's to lose. I like what you said there about responding, because I don't think this is just about 57. Jamie Kellen responding. It is in the context of the story of who could be going through this group. But Alan Norris needs to respond to what happened yesterday. It was a torrid day for Alan Norris, winning just seven legs across 100. his five matches. And high average of just 83.92. Daily average of 80.32. But... One hundred. Just to remind you who Alan Norris really is. This is a man who's won 14 ranking titles. Three of them on the PDC. 11 58. of them on the old BDO. He also was a world championship finalist on the BDO circuit. He came over to the PDC. 95. the quarterfinals of the world championship at the Alexandra Palace. That was in 2016. And back that up. The following year, 2017, with a quarter-final at the world champ, uh, the world match play, and also a semi-final at the UK Open. Two career nine darters. One of them, if you remember, 66. was in mine head at the Players' Championship Finals against Michael Smith. That actually bagged him. I think I'm right in saying thirty-five thousand pounds. The sixty PDC at that time used to do a rolling. Nine dart prize, £5,000 per televised tournament. It racked up seven tournaments, and it was going to be this big £40,000 bounty at the World Championship. Alan Norris put one in on board two at Minehead to take the prize and to take that big fanfare away from the Ali Pally. 95. Jamie, you require 82. Some really good nine dart stories I can tell you in the next leg, which may be coming very soon if Jamie Kellen hits this top. 62. Alan, you require Alan 160. Will be to tops himself, but to do that, he's going to have to find a couple of big treble 20s. There's one. 120. Well, he had to dart Jamie tops anyway, just 20. for the fun of it. Game shot on the first leg. Tops, so that's Jamie going to Kellen. For a leg, Jamie Kelly continues the trend here for Alan Norris. Second leg, it's Alan to throw first. Game on. So, nine darters. Before they actually got around to seeing one hit, which was Phil Taylor against Chris Mason, they used to have some weird and funky 100. prizes. I remember the world match play. One of the prizes was a car. And I remember... Jamie Harvey hit a 180 and stood at the back of the stage pointing at the car 40. after three darts to suggest... He's going to be driving it home. They used to do the same sort of thing, a rolling prize on the Pro Tour. And 140. It did get hit for a long time. In every event, they'd put it up by like £250, I believe it was. And it got up to quite a sizable amount. But if it got hit 55. more than once on the same weekend, you had to share it. Well, it got up to a sizable amount. I mean, about about £9,000, I think it was. And Dave Askew. 85. Of Jason Askew, the record holder here for the top average, hit the nine data. The same day, Colin Lloyd hit a 85. nine data. And I also believe Terry Jenkins did it as well. So he ended up with a third of the pot. Yeah, 100. Strange, doesn't it, when you've hit the nine data and somebody else takes the, the prize away from you? What do you think about the generally you don't get prizes for nine darters anymore? 96. No, Ronnie O'Sullivan Alan, and the like moan about 76. not getting 147 bounties in snooker to the point where he's not even gone for them. You will ever see a dart player do that? 56. No. I, I don't. I think it's a very sort of individual thing, that one from Ronnie, but 
134. Alan, you require uh, 20. I do like the pin badges. I think they're uh, incentive enough. Oh, he's no score. It. He's come low. Jamie, you require 91. He's not going to be adding to the seven legs. He's won already here if Jamie Kelly hits tops. Game shot on the second leg. Jamie Kelly. Oh, really good stuff from Kelly Clinical. Didn't go the Bill Bars unfair. Third leg is Jamie to throw first. Bullseye route on the Game on. 90 something checkout. Instead, backed himself, attacked, and punished Alan Norris. 95. On a week where anything that can go wrong has gone wrong. I think the only thing he's not done yet is fall off the stage. 140. It's early yet. We might have to turn the table the other way, and if he falls off, he could Devon Dudley himself One straight through it. 180. And Kelling not letting up. There's a well travelled darts player, Alan Norris, and uh, he did ask 100. us on his behalf to give a little shout out to the darts clubs in Sydney and Melbourne who were showing the Super Series down under when he was there touring with Terry Jenkins, of course, who we've seen here as well. If you're watching, Sydney and Melbourne Darts Club. 125. I Jamie, you require Chuck does give you 86. something to cheer about before the day is out. Instead, it could be Kelling producing all the glorious moments. Double 16 for a dozen dart leg. Alan, you require 136. Fifty-eight. Jamie required thirty-two. Good leg this from Jamie Kellen. He'll be hoping to pull the full stop on the leg here. Just twelve darts needed to get himself down to the double sixteen. No score. Alan, you require I'm seventy-eight. I'm going to do some weird and wonderful things on checkouts. Looks like conventional here. Treble eighteen, twenty, and tops. Game shot on the third. Norris leg. is off Alan the mark. Norris. Mightn't be pointless, but he won't be legless at the end of this match. Full throw. Gets Alan to throw first. Game on. Yesterday. He just swapped his darts again. Sorry, that was the third time he's changed them in this match. We did have a little Caxton going on, didn't we, in one of the games yesterday? Yeah, he nearly made double figures in the amount of times he'd change them per match. He just likes to have a different feel of things. 96. So just looking over yesterday, we mentioned about Alan Norris. Advisors on social media that he had a small cooked breakfast before he went for his walk. And 100. We questioned about the size of that, but actually, he's updated us this morning. Not with the breakfast. It's more to do with the walk, I think. He's posted a picture of a sizable mountain covered in snow. And he's got put up early, got this to climb today. I can only assume this is like a visual to the fact that he's got a big task to hand. Yeah. Because I don't think he's gone and found that and gone up that this morning. No, I think it's the Alan Norris Group C mountain metaphor, isn't it? One hundred and sixty-four. Actually, from Jamie Kelling, there would have still left a finish had he hit the twenty-five. Not if he did a single. 19 or 20. 140. Jamie required 145. Well, this is a, an interesting moment in 83. this match. 83. Alan, you require Norris 87. Norris is playing as a spoiler now in this group, but he could really spoil things a little bit for Jamie Kelling and help everybody else out in this group if he can bed the bullseye. 44. Jamie requires 62. I disagree, and I'm going to tell you why in a second. <laughs> 44. Alan, you require 43. I look forward to that. Double top. Game shot on the fourth lay. Alan Norris. Go on then, Edgar. Make your case. I don't agree, disagree with... What you've said in James terms of me first? sat here, I, I fully agree with you. I think he's just playing spoiler and he's out of this completely in terms of qualification, especially when we look at the league 134. table. He can only get 10 points. Alex Small's already on 10 points, for example, so that's one that's got away from him. I don't think he believes that. Oh, you disagree on his behalf. 140. 
because of what he posted, because he actually thinks that the mounting is scalable, that you yes. can climb to the top of it. Exactly. He's posted that saying he's going to climb that, and he's got that to climb, which it's not a closed door. It's an opportunity. It's a massive obstacle in front of him. But yeah, I, I don't think he's here to be spoiler. I think he still thinks he can get through. 60. Well, the only way possible for him to get through would be to get to 10 points, wouldn't it? And he'd have to win every single match to do that. 59. If Jamie Kelling were to win this match, he would join Alex Small on 10 points. They'd have to play each other. One of them would get to 12 and Norris wouldn't be able to get to 10. So he is officially out if he loses this game. And he's on minus 13 legs as well. So even winning all games might still mean he's going to lose on legs. But, you know, if he was to turn this around, I think my face would be exactly like those guys at WrestleMania when Brock Lesnar pinned The Undertaker. I'll take 140. Jamie Ricardo, What do you do about the mountain, though, if he does lose this match? Does he carry on and see how high he can get? Or does he change his footwear and wander off to that greasy spoon 97. again? Yeah, I think we go Alan, you back to the previous day as an extra sausage. Right, treble 19. Not found, so Kelling... 76. Looking at 60. Jamie requires 60. To edge ahead, having lost the last couple of legs in this one. Has to pick a side here, left or right. Game shot on the fifth leg. Chose Jamie Kellen. Which side he wanted to go for and executed it absolutely expertly. And Kelling. Sixth leg, it's Alan to throw first. From Game playing on. at the top on 10 points and officially eliminating Alan Norris from this week's proceedings. 60. You were talking about pin badges for. Nine dart finishes. Assume you've got one or two of those. Got loads of pin badges, yeah. One hundred and eighty. Four change of darts for Alan Norris. Now in this match, that's pretty low compared to what we were seeing yesterday. One hundred and forty. Talking about nine dart pin badges, we might have to get one made up for Jamie Kelling at the end of this leg. Not quite. No, one thing that happened, I worked at the Lakeside World Championship last year and they gave all 60. of the players and all of the staff and officials a little pin badge with the name on just representing that they were part of that tournament. That's kind of a nice touch, isn't it? It is nice. I like that. I, I've always thought there should be something for the tour card holders as well. Whether, I remember when it first came out, they gave them a belt buckle. I think even if it is just like a little pin badge or something just to... 57. Alan, you require 161. Yeah, do like that. Nice touch there from the WDF. 99. Alan Norris is going to like this. This, a 12 dart so far to get him down to just 62 points. 60. Average Alan, going towards the 90 62. mark. Game shot on the sixth leg. Alan Norris. And I think, apologies, goes out to those people. Seven and final leg. It's Jamie to throw first. Sent in that Game on. Order once again, Alan Norris breaks it at the first hurdle. I did warn you guys at the start of the day. 140. Don't look at yesterday's play and think Alan Norris is just going to continue that trend. He has far too much pedigree. 100. You can find darts for five, ten minutes that could spoil this, and maybe you need to get the oxygen tank on the back and start climbing that mountain. Well, the other half of what I was saying earlier, we didn't sort of touch on that. A win for Norris here, regardless of his own pursuits and his own ambitions, would be very good for just about everybody else in the group, other than Jamie Kelly, wouldn't it? It would give Alex Small a nice little buffer at the top of the table. It would keep Joey Tenberg just two points off Kelling, and that would also apply to the winner of the match between Brown and Mullenkamp coming next. This is so much better from Norris. That 180 is first 180 of this group campaign, and look at him go. 125. Jamie Everybody required 161. Apart from this man is in Alan Norris's camp, cheering on Chuck. Can he 
65. Enjoy change of look. Alan, you're recording 96. A Friday. 96 apiece. Is it double double? It is. It's tops. 76. It's not quite there. Jamie, you're recording what 96. What a fantastic effort this has been from Alan Norris. That was nearly a 12 dart leg. He's going to get more opportunities to win 40. his first match of this Group Alan, C campaign. Alan, you're 20. Well, he started the day talking about climbing mountains. He's maybe moving mountains here at the Super Series. Game because he finds double five match. to win Alan for the Norris. first time to complete the killing of Kelling, who was looking to go top of the table. But Alan Norris makes his first steps towards a remarkable turnaround, winning his first match of the day, winning his first match of the week, and with a very good performance, as you can see there. An average over 91, excellent on the checkouts and also hitting his first 180 of the group in the process. Much, much better from Norris, and it opens the door for John Brown or Ron Mullenkamp to make a leap towards the top. They're up next. Welcome back to the Super Series. It turns out there ain't no mountain high enough for Alan Chuck Norris as he gets the better of Jamie Kelling by four legs to three. Well, as you say, there may not be any mountain high enough. Will the river be wide enough for both Ron Mullenkamp and John Brown? They kick off their day in the mid-table positions, both on four points after their opening day's play. But with the results they've just seen, everything has just opened up for them with a bit of a push on Friday. Watching this one, Matt and Chris. Thanks, Henry. Yes, a couple of fine fights in the first two matches. Looks like Friday could be fantastic. Can Ron the Bomb, the 34-year-old Dutchman, who has been in some of the big TV events, including that run to the last 16 at the World Grand Prix, can he make his move here? Alex Small winning that opening match in the last leg decider against Joey Tenberg, put himself in pole position to qualify. He's now on 10 points. Jamie Kelling stays on eight after Alan Norris secured his first, first leg, win. First leg, it's John to throw first. Game Berg on. stays on six. This pair just behind him on four. So one of them really here, Matt, will enter the arena as a, a serious contender for the top two. 60. Yeah, I was trying to find the singer so I could try and come across quite clever and intelligent at that moment there for the I'm coming up song, but... It seems to be sung 70. by many different people, so I'm I'm just going to be honest and upfront with that because 
I think someone is going to be coming up here very soon. We saw Alan Norris just pick up the victory in the last. 41. I wouldn't be surprised if Ron Mullenkamp makes a move today and really comes up this table and challenges at the back end of this day. The throw's not being there, but that's looking backwards. Looking forwards, he now knows there are no more opportunities. It 140. Is make or break day. And normally when it comes to this, he makes. Well, something that you did during the previous match... One hundred and eighty was to just remind everybody of the actual career and successes of Alan Norris. He was sixth in this group, remains there despite that victory. Ron Mullen comes fifth, fifty nine, and out of the group, the the two most sort of consistently experienced players in terms of playing PDC darts and having had professional careers. Twenty four. I think it's actually worth just reminding everybody of Ron Mullenkamp's pursuits, although not as high profile as Norris in terms of how far he's gone in major tournaments and indeed never ended up winning a senior PDC title. But he has had wins on the Challenge Tour. He has played in the World Championship six times. And he has reached the last 68. 16 at both the Ron World Grand Prix 92. and the Players' Championship finals. And to get in those events, that means you're being very successful on the Pro Tour and the European Tours. Actually beat Gary Anderson in one of those. Tough player to beat, Matt. 84. But you normally need something John, big you require like a, a 170 finish or something to get over the line against Gary. Camp kind of defying the 180 from Brown in this leg because... 98. Ron Brown Camp looks favourite to win the opening leg. Say Ron defying it, but it's the stuff around it from Brown that has been the problem. And Ron can take advantage if he can pin double one. Six. John, you require 40. Well, he's missed five darts at double in the very first leg of this match. John Brown gets his first, second. Game shot the, the first leg. John Brown. Although he hit a maximum in that leg, it's almost like he got away with one there. Second leg, it's Ron to throw first. Game on. If you've got the darts and you've hit a 180, you're disappointed if your opponent has darts at a finish. You expect them to maybe set one up, but you certainly don't want them to be having darts at a finish. If you've got a 180, you've got a very 58. good level of control on that leg. But just looking back at the doubling stats for the pair yesterday, they both won 12 legs, so 12 successive hits at the double. 97. But John Brown only threw 30 darts at the double, which makes his percentage very high, around about the... 44 mark. Ron Mullenkamp, though, had 46. 100. 16 more missed darts at a double than John Brown. We can look at that one of two ways. We can look at that and say he's been a bit more wasteful, but we can look at that as well and say he's been making 59. more opportunities. Opportunities he made in the first leg of this match. Five missed darts at a double for Ron Mullenkamp. Seventy-eight. Ninety-two. Difficult to get past that. 82. When you move across the ocular like that, Matt, how much are you having to actually change things within your throw to get to the same target from a more unnatural position for yourself? 44. Do you know what? It's something that is very hard to describe. And I'm normally a man of many 105. words. When it comes to describing that one, it's so tricky because actually what you do a lot of the time, you're throwing not with any form of technique or 139. Sort of practice from them Ron, you require 78. A so a lot of the time it depends on the situation that you might even just power the dart. Well, Mueller can't missed five darts at double in the first leg. Game shot on the second leg. In the second Ron to Mullenkamp. clean up the 78 combo. And to square up this match. 
This is something we've seen all week. Third really, leg is Johns to throw well, first. Especially in Game this Group A campaign. These sort of combination shots, these sort of 78s and 76s and 74s, he polishes them off well. Give him three darts at the double and he tends to miss it. A real contrast to, well, how this these fixtures went yesterday and how the group started and went for most of the day. We only had 58, 2, 4, 3 results in the whole of this group yesterday. We've already had 2, 4, 3 results today. And this one, 93. In the early stages is looking like being a bit of a battle to the end as well. One hundred and forty. Ninety-nine. Just looking ahead to our next fixture as well here. Alan Norris will be taking on the tabletop at Alex Small. Eighty-three. If you're Alan Norris and you want things in your own hands, aim at the top. He's already beat Jamie Kellen today. 42. He beat him in our last match, four legs to three. If he was to beat Alex Small, the possibility of him actually climbing this mountain, the leg difference is going to be the problem for Alan Norris. Even if he gets up to the top of the mountain, I think he's still going to struggle to get through. But the climb 32. would be on. Ron, you require 80. Someone who will want to go on the climb with him. Ron Mullenkamp. Game show on the third and leg. he's starting Ron to take the steps. He's pulling on the climbing boots. Fourth leg, it's Ron to throw first. Game on. Just a little bit of a breaking news away from this match. From the ADC circuit, actually. We've just posted a, a tweet that... 56. Danny Lauby, who won here at the... Super Series recently. He's been using the ADC vault to sharpen up his game and he averaged in the final of a vault match in Stratford up on Avon last night. Would you believe it? 125.25 in a 3-0 win over Matthew Watchbrook. Great, great. 125 no for Danny Lauby, the American ace, who, of course, we saw here do some fantastic stuff at the Modus Super Series. Basically, 12 darters throughout, isn't it? 100. Yeah, it's incredible, that. Really good there from Danny Lauby. Starting to cement things together. We've seen him have some big performances over the years, certainly at the World Championship against Ryan Searle and William O'Connor. Some big matches there. So, nice to see him putting it all together. Well, who can put it all together in this one? AZ1. 273, one of those finishes where you have to think about it from a bit further out. 100. We see Brown scoring 100, not leaving a finish, which gives Camp 219. And six starts to get rid of it. One hundred and eighty. If he goes down for for the nineteens, he's still leaving a two dart. So leaving thirty nine with a one eighty is one hundred and thirty seven. Ron, you require thirty nine. Yeah, good darts from Ron Mullenkamp. He's making his move. 31. Well, he was. John, you require 36. But the problem for Ron Mullenkamp throughout this campaign has been those missed opportunities. That is a long way off there for John Brown. Doing the right thing here. Not rushing through it. Stepping back. Recomposing. No score. It's low again. Ron, you require eight. He has been here all week. There's going to be a bit of fatigue and tension kicking in. And I think that's what we're seeing here with John yeah, Brown. He's, on the he's also line. now going to have Ron disappointment. And he's going to be feeling that missed opportunity. Camp could be making his move on day number five. Fifth leg, it's John to throw first. And Brown will be Game on. looking down the mountain and seeing Alan Norris climbing towards him. 
If he loses this game, he'll be on four points. He'll be the only player on that tally, two ahead of Norris at the bottom, but crucially remaining four behind Jamie Kelling Falsy in five. second place. The only glimmer of hope for Brown is the fact that Norris beat Kelling so that that deficit is not even more severe. 125. While we're speaking of mountains, I've just seen my native Iceland have gone out of the World Cup, or they've lost their opening game, 4-2 to Spain. A decent show in there from 55. the 55. Yeah, the World Cup of darts got underway last night. Did you see the Belgium team? That was very strange, wasn't it? 100. A really good night of action, actually. I think the World Cup's really growing, and as me as one of the events, I did put on social media myself last night that when the event first came up, I, I wasn't that keen on it. I thought it was a bit of a phase, I it'd be a short lived thing, and didn't really have much legs. But now it's one of my favourite events on the whole calendar. There would have been a time where Ron Mullenkamp would not have been too far behind the pecking order for qualifying for Team Netherlands. It was one hundred, wasn't there? Where there was Michael Van Gerwen as the top dog. And then this clutch of maybe five or six players that were interchangeable as the Dutch number two. Not sure he ever got that high, but certainly sort of three, four, maybe five at worst in the ranking of the Netherlands natives. He has represented Holland, but that on the old BDO circuit. Represented them quite well. I believe they actually won the World Cup. 132. John, you require 92. Not much he could have done there. Had to find a third big treble. 52. 305, similar to that 302 shot earlier. Rightly going for the 18s with the first dart, but it's almost immaterial whether it hits the treble or the single. 88. John, you require 40. Game shot on the fifth leg. John Brown. Nice job one done. You can't climb the top of the mountain without climbing the bottom first. Six leg. It's Ron to throw Every first. Every step as valuable Game as on. the one in front and the one before. Can't take the cable car. That's the Murphy 140. way. 140. Ninety-six. Or the Edgar way, where you just look at it and go, ah, it's not for me, that. I'll find an arcade nearby. Well, Alan Norris's mountain climb is going to get as tough as it's going to get in the next match. He faces Alex Small. One he did miss opportunities to beat him yesterday. But it's bottom against top following this. 55. Ninety-seven. Good last dart there from Mullenkamp. Eighty-four left after just nine darts. He is making a move. One forty, one eighty. His second one eighty of the match. One hundred in this leg. Run. You require eighty-four. And a lot of lie on this first dart. Going to give him two darts here at the double twelve. Sixty. The reason I said a lot lied on the first dart is because I think if he hit the big 20, I don't imagine he'd have gone for the bullseye with John Brown being way back on 250. He will come back to the board. Three darts 60. in hand. For his third Run victory required 24. of Group C. Double 12, after 12. Game, shot, and, in it goes and the match. For Ron a 13 Mullenkamp. dart leg to close it out. And importantly for Ron Mullenkamp, to put himself firmly in the race for a top two place. Again, the winning player averaging over 90. They are turning up today in this fight for finals night. And Mullenkamp has taken two points off John Brown to move on to six. Just two points off second place Jamie Kelling. After the break, it's bottom against top as Alan Norris faces Alex Small.
Welcome back to the Super Series there before the break. Von Mullenkamp rounded off our first round of fixtures of a 4-2 victory against John Brown. Well, actually, if you look at the results so far today, we could have played a potential 21 legs so far. We've actually played 20 of them, that being the first game that hasn't gone all the way to a decider. Next up for us, it is the beginning of round two. We can have a look at the table because what we're going to see is a bookending battle. Alex Small, the player at the top of the table, up against Alan Noyes, who finds himself in sixth place in the table. But positive news for Noyes so far today because he did get the better with Jamie Kelling in his opener. Alex Small also 100% for the day. And always 100% in the commentary box, Matt and Chris. But he's not that bad, Alan Norris, is he? A buddy went missing from the league table. But he might be about to work his way back into it. Look, he's not going to get off the bottom in this match, but if he does win a game or two, maybe he won't finish at the foot of the field. Alex Small determined to be the man at the top, and if he wins this game, he puts a six-point buffer between himself and the players in third and fourth place. Uh, how early can we call that Small might be pretty much through? I think first leg gets Alan to throw first. Pretty much game do it. on. Maybe it, it, I think as long as it's going to come down to the placement of the games as well. And I think Joey Tembo playing Ron Mullen. One hundred and forty. It's kind of an ideal draw there for Alex Small because it means that two players there aren't going to both get to eight. One hundred and thirty-four. But. but it, Capital B U and T. Alan Norris. 95. He's looking a bit more like Alan Norris rather than what we saw yesterday. He was a costume man of Alan Norris. 79. How significant could that? 87. 150 checkout proved to be, come the end of the day, that Small took out to beat Joey Tenberg in his first match. 140. I think it's already significant in the fact that it's kept Joey Tenberg that couple of points away and it's just ticked another fixture off and it forces Joey to go have to get points 59. elsewhere. 59. I like to require 148. Well, Camp is moving. That's going to be a very interesting game. Coming up next... 92. Alan, you require 120. Well, can Norris carry on in the fashion that he played in his first match? 120 won't be taken out. The answer is an emphatic no. And Alex Moore just takes a moment. He knows it's a big chance already. A break of three in the first leg puts Alex require all 56. of the cards in his hand. 20. He's missed the opportunity. Alan, you require 52. Nothing feels secure with Alan Norris at Game the moment. Game shot on the first leg. But Alan Norris. That was nice and clean and confident and crisp from Alan Norris. Second leg, it's Alex to throw first. Actually, I probably shouldn't use the word crisp around you. 140. So yeah, we won't go into that today. Not my responsibility. Henry Deacon is the Modus Super Series crisp monitor. Falsy five. Or was he's been sacked from that particular role? But a nice crisp finish from Chuck Norris. One hundred and eighty. Nice crisp scoring from Alex Small, who could have been holding all the aces as well as wearing them if he'd have taken out the checkout. But missed two darts to do so in 100. the previous leg. Now, as a player, you don't mind this situation. Alex Small is putting in an absolute battering of a leg here. Could have been on for a 10 darter. Alan Norris right now is going to stand at the back of the stage thinking, I really don't care. You can do this on your throw. It's fine. This hurts when 95. it's been against you. I like to require 67. first. Well, yeah, he's a brilliant the leg of from Small. Alex Small. No doubt about that. 11 data. Acknowledged by Alan Norris. But as you say, he Third knows Alan to throw first. He's still game on. Got this game in his own destiny. If he just holds his throw throughout, he will be the victor. Look, straight back in the treble. This is just 100. giving a little bit of insight to how 
players think when they're playing in a professional environment. He just would have thought, oh, well. 140. If he does it again, and he does it in this leg, that's when he might start to care a little bit more. Because it changes the Eighty. context of the game. It takes that power of the throw away from you. But he is doing it again. 140. Already five scores above the 140 mark, including that 180. 46. One hundred and one. Well, it worked out all right in the end. That little slip into the treble seven, no harm done. In fact, better off hitting that than a single nineteen. It proved to be the case. Ninety-six. Alec require one hundred and twenty. Darts do stand up, and they are pretty long. So this would be eighty. A very good finish if he could have pulled it off. Probably almost intentionally threw it high because. He knew with Norris not on a finish, better to return on tops than tens, and it's he's going to get three darts at double if he 43. needs them. 43. I like to require 40. Game shot on the third lay. Alex Small. Good leg, that one, to back up the good, strong, solid holder throw. A 14 darter there from Alex Small. Fourth leg, it's Alex to the throw first. Game 110. On. Two big back-to-back -back legs. And it's the big scoring 100. base here for Alec that is getting that average up. Big, big power scores. Very hard to live with. Norris, 29 100. points down on the averages at the moment. If that continues, this game will not be lasting very long. 60. Matt mentioned it yesterday, but for those that weren't watching... A look at the Alex Small darts when he next comes to the board. It's quite a, a tribute act, isn't it? Michael Van Gerwen barrels. 100. And Gerwen Price stems and flights. Take a look at those. 93. So if he just went, right, who's the best players in the world? I'm just going to make a, a mashup of those. But you've got to say... When you talk about the best players in the world, it's kind of a three-way conversation. 100. Moment, you're Michael Smith as well. So you need to get a bit of Michael Smith on there as well somewhere, Alec. 92. I did suggest yesterday that he should get a Michael Smith shirt, but then he's turned up with that Bobby Dazzler today, and I'm not sure he should be swapping that one. 95. Alec can require 156. Well, nothing is safe with small around, but he won't be taking out the 156. So Norris will return for the 106. And a potential break back, which would... 128. Take control. Alan, you require 106. Could stay there. Probably goes to treble 18. 86. A good enough marker just to follow in Alec his mind. require 28. For this to put a gap between the pair. Double seven. And still. 14. Not found. Opportunity knocks for Norris. Alan, you require 20. 10. That will be a disappointment. Alec can require 14. Real opportunity to break back, and in doing so, he would have been the favourite to go on and win the match. He will get that chance ten. again. Mr. Opportunity. Alan, you require 10. He stood knocking on the door. Well, Alan, let him in. That was the knocking. The kick of the hockey. The we'll fourth see play. that with Alan many Norris. Rob Cross, for example, likes to do that before he comes up to a big moment. Alan Norris. Gives the hockey a kick in. Gives the double a hit in. Fifth leg. It's Alan to throw first. Game on. He wasn't even aware that he was throwing first, that he was breaking. He wasn't aware of the importance of that leg. But knowing that will be music 41. to his ears. Hasn't taken advantage of having the throw. I have to say, he does look like he's... 100. Reveling in this task of 
or what we think is a spoiler, but what he sees as this great escape, this climb up the mountain. Well, fighters love fighting, don't they? And same with this. Competitors love to compete. 100. Fifty nine. One hundred and eighty. Did all the hard work, did Alex Small, to get the breaker throw. And he gave it away in the last leg. One hundred. Really good resilience Alex here. Just 121. To ignore that setback and that disappointment, and to get straight back onto this big power scoring again. That's his forty one. One eighty. Of this contest so far. We are looking for his weekly totally at five yesterday, including two so far. PC8. I like to require 80. Makes him the biggest 180 hitter in this group so far. He's opted to go to the 16s there, looking at the Alan Norris score of the 198. Didn't have to stay on the 20s, which means if you are a double 16 man, you get that bit of luxury to be able to set 60. that up. I like to require 32. Game shot on the fifth leg. Small. Alex Small. Every time he finds himself in a bit of a hole in this group, he just puts in a Sick leg. Gets Alex to throw first. A little Game spurt. On. He is leading the match by just one leg, but it's good value to be leading the 140. match. 140. Difference in the averages, 22 points between them. Just love the changes from Alan Norris and just seeing Alex Small come back there. Alan Norris stood at the back of the table with the glasses off. Stood in front of a row of darts and then Alex Small goes up and he just hovers the hand 85. over like one of those grabbers going over the teddy bears at the amusement arcade. I'll have these ones, please. Well, these ones are working. First 180 for him in this match. Second of the day and indeed the group. 140. Oh, 140. It's a really topsy turvy one, this one. 140. Cancelling each other out with breaks of throat being exchanged. 100. I like to require 130. Like previous match with a 150 checkout. He's not going to repeat a similar trick here. But he does leave it handy and forces Alan, Alan Norris 81. to finish this. 55. Oh, you heard the reaction. Alec he knows how close 40. that was. That looks a perfect dart for Alex. Always clattered into the barrel. Big open bed. Switch down to the 10s. 20. Second life. Alan, you require 26. Alan Could be another match going the distance. Would be three out of the first four. No score, but it may not happen. I like to require 20. Four could cut Norris down to size. Game, shot, and the Alex match. Small does Alex Small does exactly that. The trip up the mountain was a short-lived hike for Alan Norris, but for Alex Small, well, he's probably as good as through. Maybe a win away at worst. Again, another decent display from a winning player. And when you consider Alex Small missed 16 darts at double in that match, the scoring power was absolutely sublime. A 93.66 average despite just a 20% checkout success rate. He moves further clear at the top of the table and is looking a cert for finals night, trying to join him, Joey Tenberge and Ron Mullenkamp, who play next. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty.
Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team off the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up, and the action gets underway from 7.30 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Well, before the break, we saw a big win for Alex Small because that puts him on the darty dozen, getting the bet of Alan Norris by four legs to two in our bookending battle here in Group C. Well, from the bookenders to the middle because the players in third and sorry, the players in third and fourth, yes, I am right, are going toe to toe in this one as one Moolenkamp takes on Joey Tenberg. For Joey, he can move on to eight points of a win, as can Ron, which are part of the pressure upon Jamie Kelling watching this one. Chris and Matt. Thank you very much, Henry. The fight for finals night in full swing. And Alex Small, as you were saying, and as you at home were watching, has taken a giant leap towards it with two victories in his opening two matches. The first of them against this man, Joey Tenberg, in a last leg decider. Ron Moolenkamp, his fellow Dutch darter, then got the better of John Brown to go level on points with Tenberg. So whoever first leg, it's Joey to throw first. Game on. Emerge as the main rival for Jamie Kelling in a now precarious second spot after Kelling was beaten by Alan Norris in the second match of the day. Forty-five. And the opportunities for points running out. There are ten fixtures to be played. We are now in lap number seven. 41. I have to admit, Matthew, I do love a Friday at the Moda Super Series. It's just something about that race to finals night that sharpens the focus. 100. And just adds that extra bit of spice. But what's been interesting in this group is that actually the players have stepped up. Often it can be, it can lead to a decrease in level, but not none of that in this group today. The, the players... In the group, 47. all four of the winners, so Alex Small twice, Alan Norris and Ron Muhlenkamp, winning with averages over 90. 93. I don't want to keep bringing it up too much, but I feel we had that day yesterday where the players was edgy, the players was trying to jostle for position, and today they've come in and they almost don't have that luxury of the extra lives and those opportunities 58. and to look forward and think, OK, I can do it again. They can't. Especially these two. It is now time to go. What's strange is that that often happens the way around. But the real pressure point is when the standard gets a bit more edgy and drops slightly, but not being the case today. 81. Joey require 123. Well, the camp hasn't carried on where he left off at the start of this match. Tenberg has been allowed to win this opening leg at a canter, seemingly. 65. Peak last start there because that was starting to get a bit ropey. Ninety-five. Joey trend. required I mean, fifty-eight. All week he's just not been able to back up a performance. Game shot on the first leg. Joey Tenberg. And a very comfortable holder throw there for Joey Tenberg. Second leg. It's Ron to throw first. Game on. That was a race. He'd been crossing the line, looking back, and probably couldn't even see Ron Munich come on the horizon. 
140. Ron puts it behind him and finds a two treble turn in his opener here. But anything you can do, I can do better. 180. Sixty. One hundred. Launching an assault on the Mühlenkamp throw here. A one eighty followed by a turn. And Ron could find himself in a spot of bother if he doesn't leave a finish after these darts. Which he won't. Ninety seven. 57. These are the positions where you want 40s have the most weight to them. It's actually one of those two dark combinations. 1-2-1 one, would one be just as good. 81. Joey required 164. Maybe could have thought about a switch there. 1-2-3 is a tricky old out shot. 74. Ron, you require 123. Well, started on the bullseye. Don't really get the value in it. Still got to find a treble. Does find a treble. Game shot on the and second leg. Out shot Ron from Ron Mullen Camp, who started on the bull for no apparent reason. And then third leg, it's Joey to throw off. first. Game on. Treble to double. Really bizarre out shot, that. I get it on, say, it, it's still questionable, but on, say, a 1 2, two where the 25 leaves your 97, where if you hit the ball, at least you've got a shot at double double, for example. But on 1 2 3, starting on the bullseye, I don't think I've ever seen anyone try that before. I don't think it's going to take on. 41. It's like. There's been a meeting somewhere, a secret meeting amongst the Dutch darters. That 100. Just says, what weird and funky ways could we come up with some finishers to do this week? And they just sat there and came up with these bizarre routes. And ironically, some of them are actually going. 100. 140. 100. It was a strange one, but if it goes, then how can you argue with it, I suppose? 46. He's got a chance here, Mullenkamp. If he can find a couple of trebles, then he's on a much better finish than his opponent. But that's not the treble he was hoping for. Trying to do the sums now. It might be a good time to go for the bull this time. Make your mind up, Ron. I think he's just going to stay and try and get the treble 21st, then worry about it once you've... Piled in a big 31. score. 31. Joey require 155. I think, yeah, the dart itself looked like a decent guide for the treble 20, didn't it? But he just sort of tied himself up 97. in 97. 99. Joey require 58. Game shot on the third leg. Hole to throw Joey, there for Tenberg. Joey Tenberg. Rob Mullenkamp was in eye shot this time, but still a long way back on the 130. Fourth leg, it's Ron to throw he's first. He's going to have Game to on. break the throw with Joey Tenberg somewhere along the way, and at the moment, isn't even getting close. 140. 
It's looking like he's going to try and do what he did in his own throw last time now, Mullenkamp. A strong start. Has been pretty in and out. 43. From what I've seen this week, Mullenkamp. Not just in terms of match by match, but almost leg by 85. leg. 85. Following this one, the final one of our first six fixtures, meaning everyone will have just three games 58. left to play. Come 3 p.m. today, and it's Jamie Kelling against John Brown. John Brown, who needs a win. 100. To really stay in the race, but it's a proper pivotal match, that, because if Brown does win it, he'll only be two points off the pace in terms of second place if he wins it behind Kelling and whoever wins this one. If he loses it, I think you can say he's as, as good 100. as 100. Forty two. Ron, you require one hundred and sixty. Now we're gonna get an explosive out shot from Ron Mullen camp. Misfires. And he hasn't left it as handy as he would have hoped there. Tim Berg with an opportunity to give himself a chance in this leg. 123. Ron, you require 118. Well, that shot from Joey Tenberg changed the entire look of this one. From 58. Nowhere. Joey, you require Good 106. Here to break the Munich Camp throw, he only needs the one treble. Finds it. Double 16. Game shot on the, the fourth throw. play. Joey Tenberg. Joey Tenberg. Now just one leg away from the match, and he's going to throw first in two of those. Fifth leg, it's Joey to throw first. Game on. Well, it won't be absolutely disastrous for Ron Mullenkamp, this, because whatever happens, he's only going to be two points behind. 60. Second place. However, it does put it out of his hands, because he'll be two points behind one of the players that he's already played. 100. Fifty-eight. Good dart that for Mullen Camp. The way his darts sit, that is very inviting for him. 135. Just in that top right-hand corner with that slightly upwards angle. Bit of a lift on the dart. 60. Fifty-eight. A lot could rest on this dart here. One hundred and forty. It gets him back in the leg, a leg that Mullenkamp had made the moves in, and that's a difficult dart for him to navigate. He's managed it. One hundred and forty. Oh, couple of darts. Some players just seem to have that knack, don't they? When you look at it and you think it's... 125. Ron, you require 68. He's only going to get a dart. A dart to keep him in this match. A dart to keep his... Hopes alive 28. To eight. But Joey Tenberg... Joey, you require 58. ...to second place by taking this 58. Double top to do so. 18. Almost. Almost. Between the dark Ron, and the wire. Ron, you require 40. Ron Mullenkamp wants to take the game to the wire. This has been where it's unravelled a little bit for him when he's had the three darts in the hand going for the double. It's a long way low. Game shot on the fifth Not a problem for him on this occasion. Ron Mullenkamp. Keeps the game ticking. He needed to break the throw twice. That's one of them. Sixth though, gets Ron to throw first. Game on. Sixty-nine. 
60. One hundred and forty. Can Mullenkamp force that decider? This will help him if he forces another dart in there. One hundred and forty. Oh, the back leg kick up there like a mule. Very flicky, all, all aspects, wasn't it? Even on the eighty-five the arm and the wrist and the, well, the sheer lack of extension, just a flick. One hundred and thirty seven. Very much looking like it could go all the way. And remember, we've already seen Joey Tenberg. One hundred and forty. Really Ron, you require one hundred and sixty four. His first match of the day he lost that when his opponent took out a whopper. Alex Small's one fifty that saw Small. Disappear into the distance in this 64. group. Sixty-four. Joey Ricardo, one hundred and thirty-six. Mullenkamp, by beating him here, could keep himself, could keep Joey outside the top two again. Ninety-six. Ron, you require one hundred. Before we get to that stage, he's going to have to take out this ton. He really might go tops, tops here. It's tops. 40. For Jerry Tenberg. Jerry required 40. To go into second position. 1 and that and is the match. exactly Jerry what he Tenberg. does. A 4 2 success over Ron Mullenkamp. Not disastrous. Poor Mullenkamp still will have an opportunity. But it's much more likely that Tenberg will take a top two spot now. And he's taken the points off his fellow Dutchman. An average just shy of 89, 50% on the doubles. And he does move into second spot ahead of Jamie Kelling on leg difference. But Kelling can return there if he can defeat John Brown after the break.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series. Before the break, Joey Timberg got the better of Ron Moulinkamp by four legs to two. That pivotal mid-table battle going the way of Timberg, which puts him on eight points and above Jamie Kelling, if only temporarily, on legs difference. It's Kelling we're going to see now in action up against John Brown. He can move himself on six points with victory. So it's a battle of JK and JB. And watching this one in the commentary box, CM and Emmy. No, not me. Luckily for you, it's Matthew Edgar. It certainly is, Mr. Egger, alongside me. And I think, Matt, it's time to really look at the possibilities of matches like this because my reading of the situation is that if this man, John Brown, the 23-year-old Bristolian... First leg, it's Jamie to throw a first. victory here, then you've got Game a, on. a four-player race for, for second place, effectively. It looks like Alex Small is going to get through. He's already on 12 points. You'd think he'd pick up at least one more win. But if Brown 93. doesn't win the match, and effectively he's out of the race. Wouldn't surprise me to see that position where we do have a lot of players in the running. I don't 58. see anyone pulling away with it at the moment other than Alex Small, who's really turned up today. I said at the top of the show, I challenged the players. I says, who's going to stand up and be counted? Because yesterday was a day of opportunity that no one really grasped. So 58. far, Alex Small has been the man to do that. Two very good performances from him. Nearly enough at 92 and a 93 average. 140. 96. 100. It is a huge game for Brown in particular, isn't it, when you consider that if he does lose it, then Kelling goes six points 96. clear of him. Jamie, you require 108. These games happen on a Friday at the Moda Super Series. Kelling missing the opportunity to take the first leg, but will have at least three more darts at double should he need them. Yeah, and then if he if he wins it, John Brown, he'll actually only 93. be... 93. Jamie requires 40. Off the top two. Game shot on the first really leg. do or die Jamie kind Kelling. of match for JB, and the first leg goes the way of Kelling. Second leg, it's John to throw first. Game on. 140. 95. Was a weekly winner not too long ago. And there's some really positive vibes there. 60. That he'll have coming from that. Knowing he can get the job done. Sometimes believing you can get the job done, but then also experiencing it are two completely different things. 58. I think that's why quite often we see players when they... Do you win a big event like Johnny Clayton, for example, who just went on to win many more after? 100. 59. 121. Well, this is not the start that Brown would have been looking 100. for. 100. Jamie required 127. I think getting an opportunity to break the throw. Not going to take it, but Brown himself may only get a dart at the bullseye when he comes back. 29. John, you require 84. Gets better than that. Two at uh, double 12. 72. Kelling's last Jamie visit, though, has put himself 98. in a tricky position. 58. John, you require 12. Game shot on the second lay. John Brown. We have a level game. 19 data there from Third leg, it's Jamie to throw first. Game on. You need a bit more than that to get the break of throw, you feel, but... 
It's enough at the moment to keep him in this one, and that's what you've got to do. 96. Stay in there, keep swinging, and eventually hope one of these blows land. 137. 59. 100. 96. Switching down, or is he going to change his mind there? Just re-gripping the dart rather than a change of route. 96. So he did hit a, a single 19 with his last dart and left 168. You can see him tapping the head in the background there. 58. Switch across to the 17s with a final dart and he'd have been on a finish here. It won't matter because Kelling isn't, but he could have been. 96. One hundred and forty. John, you require seventy-two. Visit there from Jamie Kelling. Let John Brown know he's only going to get the one dart. Thirty-two. Jamie, you require You're fifty-two. Done with a few more, you feel. Kelling, two darts. Twelve. Well, now John, you require forty. John Brown. Handful of darts. We said he's going to need a little bit more than that 19 in the last one. He's up to this shot one. The third leg. He's converted John Brown. to break the throw of Jamie Kelly and keep his hopes alive, not just to win in this game, but actually getting Fourth through leg. to it's Saturday to throw first. Game on. Forty-five. I know that Jamie Kelly is still very much going to be in the mix. Whatever happens in this match, he'll be level on points, second spot. At 100. Worst. But if he loses the match, do you fear for him in this group? 58. It all comes down to him personally. Now, I don't really know Jamie Kelly as such, so it's quite hard to analyze how he's going to approach that one. But the, the certainly, when you are getting a couple of defeats, especially when you put yourself in that good position, you have four wins in a row yesterday after losing his opening match there is a negativity that you tend to get into patterns 100 he'll be trying to find a way out of it rather than concentrating what he should be doing which is winning the group let's say too many people play continuums 92 play jamie required 161 rather than just breaking it down into individual matches which ultimately you want to win each individual one 60 Brown could still here put himself in a decent position. 96. To travel to Jamie Require 101. Brown on a very similar kind of shot. 19s will be the route. So John Brown with an opportunity 49. to increase John, you require his advantage to two and move with him one of an all-important win. Does he stay there? Look like a decent guide. 58. Wasn't able to use that guard Jamie on that last dart. 52. Quite a bit away there from the treble. So this is the shot that Jamie Kelly missed two darts at in the last leg in order to give John Brown the opportunity to break the throw. 22. He's missed two darts at in this John leg. John Require 56. Give John Brown the opportunity to hold the throw and put himself a leg away from the match. Game shot on the fourth This could leg. be turning into a John big Brown. win for Brown and an enormous result in Group C. Fifth leg, it's Jamie Reminder, to throw in first. Game on. Alex Small tops the table on 12 points. Joey Tenberg and Jamie Kelling both have eight. Ron Muhlenkamp has six. And that's where John Brown will be heading with victory in 121. this 121. And it will be a real four-way fight for second place, seemingly. You'd expect Alex Small to cross the line 57. at some point today. Well, then it's Alex Small. One hundred and eighty. In the big scores today, undefeated.
Speaking of which... 140! Ken fires in his 180, his first 180 of the match, and it could not have come at a better time. He needs a bit more like that. 125! 180, not just the first of the match, the seventh of his... Group 44. C campaign Jamie so requires far. 75. Game shot on the fifth lay. Jamie Kellen. Well, he needed a reaction. He needed to do something. A 12 darter is about as good as it's ever going to get in that situation. Sixth leg. It's shot to throw first. Arts Game on. Jamie Kellen. Really good resilience. 81. Yes. Very much game 100. on, but it will be group on if Brown gets a win here. And grouping of four players between second and fifth. Just two points between them. 60. One hundred. And then at the bottom, Alan Norris, who's certainly a better version of himself today as he, than he was yesterday, that could actually one hundred and thirty-seven. Who goes through? Sixty. We know it won't be him because Tenberg and Kelling still have to play each other. Fifty-nine. So one of them will definitely get to 10 points, a tally that Norris can't make. 60. John, you require 164. Just wants to leave this handy. Would love a treble with his last dart. 60. Three well-thrown darts, but none of them finding the red bit. He'll wonder how that last one's not gone in as well. It just seemed to find a way to... Separate the two darts where it didn't John, seem to be enough room to 104. do so. 54. This in the context, Jamie, not just of this match, but this group now. It might only be a dart of the ball. It will be. Game and shot on the in. sixth leg. Huge Jamie visit there again from Jamie Kellen. At 3-1 down, he's gone out in 12 darts and then an 88 on the Seven ball. final leg. It's he Jamie to throw first. mightily deep Game here. On. And he is coming up with the answers. Over to you, John Brown. Can you find one more big leg to get that break and throw to keep yourself in 40. this group? Or is Jamie Kellen a previous week winner? A man who played in the most recent Champions Week. And he keep himself. 134. In the Ninety-seven. Well, we said it was a big match. It ends up being a big leg. A reminder of the situation for John Brown in particular. 60. If he loses this leg, he's as, as good as out. If Jamie Kelling loses a leg, then Brown joins that race. It's a difference between him being two points of second place and six points of second 99. place. Six points left to play for. This is enormous. That was a huge last start there from Jamie Kellyn as well. It was starting to slip away 96. from him. If he didn't find a treble, he'd been in a big bit of bother. It's still not out of trouble yet. John Brown will get the first poke. 100. John, you require Finally 111. In the balance. Oh, well, what a way it would be to win a crucial contest. 79. And he was that close. Jamie, you require 107. Now he has to hope. Needs a treble. Will not find it. Brown gets 55. three. 55. Match. John, you require 32. Already missed two. 
Now he's missed three and he's made it very, very difficult. He's blocked himself. This is not the dart you want to have to throw to effectively stay in the race. 16. And he has got so close. So close. Jamie require 52. Can Kelling kill him off? Double top to do so. Steps back. Big deep breath. Brown thinks it's over. Game and it is shot. Jamie and Kelling the match. with the crucial Jamie double Kelly. that effectively ends John Brown's hopes in Group C and bolsters the bid for Kelling to return to finals night, having won a week previously here at the Super Series. Brown missing four match darts in that decider, and the doubles will cost him in the end. As for Kelling, he's very much in the mix. He moves back into second place in the table. And the play will come to a grandstand finish when the action resumes at 3 p.m.
very good afternoon and welcome along to the live lounge here in Portsmouth for the Modus Super Series. We've entered the final day of qualification for tomorrow evening's finale and we are midway through our Group C session. Matthew Edgar has been describing all the action down in the commentary box over the last six games or so. This is what we've seen so far this afternoon and well we expected a group that was going to have twists and turns in each and every direction and well when you look at the patterns of play we have seen pretty much that. Yeah, they've been all really closely contested games. No one's really won a game quite convincingly yet, like a 4-1 or a 4-0. And I think as the day goes on, we're going to start seeing that happen as players now start to lose a bit of intensity when they realise they're out of the situations. And when we see the players that are up there battling for it, I've just walked through the practice room there now, and you can sense the different ambience around the room and what sort of people are playing for now. But Alex Small, you've got to say, he's been the standout performer so far. So that is how the results have gone so far. Let's see how that correlates then in terms of the table as you head towards our final sprint at the end of the Group C campaign. And well, the two players that were top of the table going into today's session are still the top two now, even if they have flip-flop places. Yeah, and I think the big interesting point or the key point to look at here is the games played column. The players were playing 10 matches in total. They played seven so far. So 70% of the fixtures are already done. So we really are coming into the final three furlongs of this group. And there are three matches to play. So a maximum of six points available here. So we can look at players like Alan Norris, who is now impossible to qualify. We can say pretty much the same as well for John Brown when we look at how the games are going to break down. So Ron Mullenkamp still with a very outside opportunity but realistically we're now we're looking at the top three so that is how the table looks let's sum up what we've seen so far today because Alex Moore has won both of his two fixtures so far today we expected him to be a key player going into this and this 150 against Joey Tenberg well if he qualifies that could be the moment that qualifies him He's played really well all day. It's not just the big finishes that he's done. It's the big scoring visits. That's what's really been his key. That last match when he won, he missed handful after handful of darts at doubles. But he still averaged 93. And his doubling stats was probably the lowest he's thrown all week. Just shows how much power scoring he's been having in them 140s. He's been hammering in the 180s and the big maximum visits. He has really upped his game on the day he really needed to. But that is what people that have won the titles, like he's won that champion of champions. That is all about starting quick and starting early and starting at key moments. It's brought that sort of form here. He has experience of making it through to Saturday night. He has experience of getting all the way through to the big money match. He's an experienced campaigner here now, is Alec. Are you seeing today him use that experience of the past to help him here in the present? I think what he's doing is probably using the experience of disappointment because that's what drives us, that's what motivates us. A lot of the time we talk about the things that we win, but a lot of the time those things that we win have a very short-term effect. We have that boost, we have that sort of air of invincibility that comes from winning. It's a very hard feeling to describe. When you win a title, it changes how you think. How you see the world just looks differently, only for about a week. What you really get driven by is not wanting to feel that emotion, that disappointment that comes from the defeats. And it wasn't too long ago, just before Christmas, he got all the way through to the final game playing Adam Warner and walked off that stage a very disappointed man. He's also been down here, not even got through to Saturday. That same disappointment, so he'll be learning from that rather than that positivity. Well, one player who will feel more relieved than anything else is Jamie Kelly. Lost his first game of the day to Alan Norris, then responded with this last leg victory against John Brown. Brown, who missed opportunities himself, as you can see here, to get over the line. Again, we're talking about small moments. This could be the moment for Jamie Kenning because it could have unraveled if he lost this game. Yeah, and he really turned that one around. John Brown raced ahead into a lead in that one. He did all the hard work. He got himself into a position where Myself and Chris Murphy on commentary was talking about how the group was about to be blown wide open and it would become sort of a four-horse race because it would really would have bunched everything up. But what Jamie Kellen did there was just show that little bit of quality and class at the right moment in time. He brought it back. It was a big 12-dart leg, an 88 finish on the ball before that leg there when John Brown missed those darts at double. So some real clutch moments and that will really set him up and really show why he's in that position. What have you made about Joey Tenberg today? Because he is firmly in that mix now. I make of him what I've made of him all week, really. My opinion on Joey Tenberg has not changed. He's a contender. I've never really looked at him as someone and said, this is a guy that will definitely get through. 
but I've never said it would surprise me if he did. He's a contender. He's not one of these people that you look at and he's the first name on the list, but he's on the list. Well, next up for us, game seven of the day, sees Ron Moulinkamp in action up against Alan Norris. We can have a look at some of Ron's highlights from today here. Again, what's your prognosis of his session and what his thoughts will be going ahead? My analysis of Ron Mullenkamp all week's not changed. It's been the same all the way through. I think it's been a campaign for him that he'll be disappointed with on the back of what he's done in other arenas. And I'm not casting the clock back to the things myself and Chris Murphy have been talking about when we talk about Ron Mullenkamp. And we went through that reminder of who he really is and talking about the things he's achieved. We're talking about them this year. Six in the challenge to order of merit. So it's just been a week for Ron Mullenkamp that's just not quite worked out. This happens. It's sport. You know, not one week will define your season, whether it's a good week or a bad week. And that's what's going to happen moving forward. He takes on Alan Norris in our seventh game of the day. Nine matches to bring to you live here on Sporty Stuff TV between now and around about six o'clock this evening. Matthew Edgar is going to describe all the action in the commentary box in the company of Chris Murphy. Hello, Chris. Hello, Henry. Hello, everybody. And, yeah, we do have the running ready to go now. And Ron Mullenkamp, well, he can put himself on the shoulder of the top two. But the previous result between Kenning and Brown, a match you just saw clip from there, has really made things more difficult for Ron Mullenkamp. Impossible for Alan Norris now. He won't be at finals night, having lost all of his matches yesterday. Remember, the 51-year-old former Lakeside finalist, did win his opener against Jamie Kelling to open things up a little in this group. But Kelling, getting that victory against Brown has just closed the door a little again. And Mullenkamp, if he wins this one, will then be first looking leg, for favours. First leg, it's Ron to throw first. However, Game on. a little reminder of the order of play. As Charlie Corsafine gets this one underway, that Alex Small is the opponent for Jamie Kelling in the next match. So, yes, Ron Mullenkamp... As Matthew Edgar said, an outside chance. But I think we'll see how good that chance is. Basically, in the next two matches, 140. must win for Ron and then must hope that Alex Small gets the job done against Jamie Kelling. Fair assessment, Matt? Yeah, don't think 60. There's anything really more we can say about Ron Mullenkamp other than what you said in a key word there, which was hope. Because... Ron Mullenkamp winning all his games is now no longer enough. It's not all about Ron Mullenkamp anymore. But he's got to do his part of this as well. If he, There's no point in the other results going the other way if he can't get his own. Yeah, well, he could be out after the next two games or he could be very much in the picture, couldn't he? Well, he could be out after this one. If he was to lose to Alan Norris, he could only then reach 10 points. Jamie Kelling's already on that tally 80. already. But those leg difference. Yeah, you need a remarkable turnaround in that department. You're basically then looking at the miracle comeback, aren't you? You winning all your games massively. And 101. The chasing, Ron, you require 141. Well, the men he's chasing because Joey Tenberg's sandwiched between that position. Yeah, he's in action against John Brown. 59. In the ninth game, Brown's defeat. Condemning him. The same fate as Alan Norris, all but out. 60. Norris Ron, you out. require 82. Newland Camp is looking to take out 82. Or is he looking to take it out, out? Top centre complete. 42. The out shot, but it's over the top. Alan, you require 140. Sixty. Ron, you require forty. To get the first part of the equation done. Game shot on the first leg. Good start to this Ron match. From Ron Mullen Camp. And it's more misery for Alan Norris. Second leg, it's Alan to throw first. He did get game on. His first victory in the opening game today. Wasn't able to follow that up in the next one. Went back 43. to sort of the performances we've seen the past couple of days. But you said something at the end. Of the, am I the only person that does this? I mean, 
get in contact with us on our social 45. media platforms as well. If you're along this same th- sort of thought pattern as me, and if you are, I apologise that you're along my same sort of wavelength at MSS Darts, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. But when Chris Murphy said there about he went over the top, instantly my head thought, Dean Win Stanley. One hundred and thirty-four. Yesterday you said something about stretch, and I thought, oh, David Evans. And if anyone says jackpot, I say Adrian Lewis. And as soon as someone says like a dark 100. player's nickname, instantly I just think of that player. It's almost a curse, isn't it? Being involved in this sport. 140. If anyone ever says prime time, I always think about what's on the telly tonight. 41. Merlin Camp having 60. to do his job, as we said, we, we've been in this scenario for a couple of games now where a player just needs to win to stay in, and the league table will look so much healthier for Mullen Ron, you require 122. He can get a victory here. Yes, it'll be a game ahead, but he will have just two points. 106. To second place, Jamie Kelly. His big defeat really today was the one against Jerry 100. Tenberg, wasn't there? Ron, was you require 16. One of the players was going to be the real contender and the other one was going to have an outside chance. Yeah, fully agree. He fancied that. I think he thought that one was in. He's had to come right the way across because the way his darts just no kick score. out to the side. He just slid that one down Alan, the barrel. you require 80. Alan Norris, when he's had his opportunities... Been quite good, especially when he gives that hockey a bit of a kick in first. He's laid a few into it. 60. Ron, you require 16. Well, the three missed outside the double eight on the previous visit. Thought one was in. Yeah, that one is on in. the second lay. Ron so Mullenkamp. That means that Mullenkamp doubles his lead in this contest and just keeps the dream alive. Third leg, it's Ron to throw first. Game on. Starting to look like Alan Norris just had a small little reprieve from what's been a nightmare campaign for him. 60. That opening victory against Jamie Kelly. Lost every other match. We mentioned that he put a picture out on social media this morning of a mountain saying that he's off to climb it today. Symbolisation of the task that's in hand, but it's like he did his start to climb the mountain in the opening game, but then realised he hadn't brought any equipment. There's only so far you can go when you try and climb a mountain in shorts and flip-flops. 140. And he could be forgiven now for, you know, knowing he's out of the race for just sort of going through the motions. But 140. Never met a darts player who's happy to lose any game. They want to keep fighting. They want to keep battling. You can see it there. It's frustration. 57. Not the treble, giving Ron, it the you come require on. 167. This is a man who can't qualify. Pride is a big 97. thing, especially in sort of a solo sport like this. Especially when you're playing in front of cameras and you know Ron, you require family, 70. friends, teammates, or watching along. Game shot on the third lay. Ron Moulinkamp. There he's just pacing towards the victory line. Full thing, it's Alan to throw first. Game on. I'm troubled in this game. Norris has been restricted to just a single dart a double in the match. That may change if he has a good 140. leg here. 140. But the damage may be done, and this is exactly what Camp needed. Not just a win, but a big one. 140. It's been some 
top bombing this from from Camp. Got his stats and his 93. numbers back up. In fact, at the moment, he's running better than anything we've seen so far of him in Group C. Fixtures still to come against Alex Small and Jamie Kelling. So the two players that are currently occupying the top two spots are the opponents for Camp, which again plays into his hands a little bit. 98. I think especially because Alex Small's next game is against Jamie Kelling. Them two are coming up in our next match. I think we're in a position here where, if anything, he might be sitting clapping everything good that Alex Small does and almost sending him out to bat as a 58. bit of a tag team partner. I'll only require 170. If Kelling does lose again, it does... 89. Put it back into Ron's hands because he has a chance to, to go level on points. There is that big leg difference. And then he will have the task of trying to beat Small as well. You would think that if Camp is to qualify, he has to win the rest of his games. 100. Alan, you require 81. Oh, yeah, he's definitely not going to get through if he loses another one. I'm pretty confident of that. Game shot on the fourth lost a leg line. here. Alan and Norris. every leg could matter, particularly for him on a minus leg difference going into this match. Fifth leg, it's Ron to throw first. A little smile from Game on. <laughs> Alan Norris. Who thought he was throwing first. Still looks a little bit confused about it. One of those players who likes to interact with his opponent. 100. Bit, isn't he, Norris? And it's quite interesting when you get a player a bit like Ron who doesn't. He just wants to stay in his own little bubble and not exchange any pleasantries with the opposition. 50. It's something that you see here quite a bit as well. A lot of people wanting to interact. We see a lot of fist bumps after a good shot and before deciding legs. And 85. Anyone who watched the World Cup of Darts last night would have seen two teammates who didn't want to interact with each other. That was a really interesting. 100. Look. I've seen a been a statement, actually, that it's not going to be like that tonight, apparently. Well, they put... Officially put something out, have they? Yeah, I think they've been having a bit of mediation. 140. I know uh, Dimitri Vandenberg has been involved in meditation before. 140. But... Bit of pairs counselling. 140. This has been very good from Ron Mullenkamp. Much improved performance. Looking a lot better. Keeping himself in the running. But he's just got 93. to finish the job here. Ron, you require 36. Trying to do so without drama. Game, shot, and, exactly and the match. Ron, Ron Mullenkamp gets the win he needed. A 4-1 success over the already eliminated Alan Norris. And it's one that makes sure that Camp does not follow suit. An excellent display, an average over 94, 40% on the checkouts. And Camp is in the mix. Two points off second place, Jamie Kelling, who is playing first place, Alex Small, in a few moments' time. Still to come, John Brown taking on Joey Tenberg as well. But that win for Ron Camp keeps him in contention. Catch the best thoroughbred racing from South Africa alongside 15 live greyhound races at 11 o'clock every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday morning live here on Sporty Stuff TV.
Welcome back to the Super Series. Everyone remains an interested party in terms of the race for qualification. He gets the bet of Alan Norris by four legs one. This is how the table looks. He moves on to eight points alongside Joey Tenberg on eight. And our next match sees the top two in the table. Alex Small take on Jamie Kelling. Small on 12, Kelling on 10 respectively. So a win for JK would very much scupper the hopes of Tenberg and Mullenkamp's qualification. However, a win for Small would put him in the picture for Saturday night. Right, watching this one in the commentary box, it's Matt and Chris. Thank you very much, Henry. Yeah, here we go. The Welshman, Alex Small. About to do battle in this top of the table tussle. He takes on Jamie Kelling, the man just behind him. And for all of the fun and thrills and twists and turns in this First group... First leg, gets Alex to throw first. Game on. was a question here to Mr. Edgar alongside me. He's always quick to make a prediction. And as much as I hate to say it often, correct. If Jamie Kelling wins this match, do you think this group is as good as done? 100. It depends on the score line. So I'll give you 60. a half yes. Because. Well, a half yes is a yeah, isn't it? It's the same thing. Well, if Jerry Tenberg beats John Brown quite big in the next game, for example, it, it'll come down on that legs column. And of course, Kelly and Tenberg meet each other later in the session. 100. So I, I do think it comes down to the score lines of those games. Yeah, so Kellen gets to 12 here. 34. Tenberg beats Brown. He gets to 10. Then in his next game, he faces Jamie Kelling and could get to 12 with him. 140. Could have a better difference. I think that's a fair assessment, Matt. 95. Alex like require 156. Deep, though, to know that Alex Small has been the standout performer of this group today. 32. Jamie and require 147. Jamie Kelly is going to beat him, especially with Alex having that advantage of the throw. He's going to have to produce something. 44. Alex like require 124. Much more than he's today. 88. Good thinking Jamie there by Alex for the, the double 18. It, it was a dart at the ball. Just a happy accident. 71. Alex required 36. Game shot on the first leg. One of them done. Alex Small. He used to win this game. He will be certainly through. Second leg. It's Jamie to throw first. Game on. 41. 60. Sixty. Sixty. Step to Alex Small. Do you think he's in the rightful position? you think he has been the the best player in this group? 100. Yesterday, for sure. I think yesterday was one of those situations where anybody could have essentially been the best 60. player because everyone's sort of underproduced. But we laid down the marker at the start of the day. We says, who's going to stand up? Someone stand up tall. It was the man named Small. 100. Well, he's now three legs away from qualification. If he wins this match, he would be the first man through from Group 134. C. 134. Maybe Kelling, though, looking to stop that happening. Double 16 60. when he comes back. Jamie required 32. 32. No score. Alec to require 161. 45. Jamie require 32. Game shot on the second leg. 
Jamie Kelly. All square between this top two. It's looked like Third leg, it's Alex to throw first. Basically, ever since the first match of the day when he took out that stunning 150 checkout to beat Joey Tenberg. 93. But Jamie Kelly's position has become more precarious. Don't forget that he actually went into today as the league leader. 41. One hundred. It's quite interesting when you look at the season of Alex Small and you see that he did go to Q School this year to try and get a PDC 77. tour card. But then upon not attaining that tour card, didn't take the option to go to the Challenge Tour events, which is 56. something that the players who don't get a PDC tour card get the opportunity to go and do. And that challenge draw event has a position in the 60. PDC World Championship at Alexandra Palace. It has tour cards on offer. And 56. Not to do them. Very rare that we see that with a player that when they don't get to it, most will play at least the 140. first weekend. 140. Falsy four. Well, there might be an opening here for Kelling. And this group could get a little more interesting if he wins the game. 58. Delaying Alec the progress of 152. Small. 160. Well, look at the bullseye. Jamie Require 125. 60 for tops. Not to beat. 65. To Alex himself. required 36. Back in front by a nose. Game shot on the third lay. Alex Small. He's going with throw in the early part of this one. If that continues, Alex Small will be confirming his place in Saturday. Full and it's Jamie Jim to Long. throw first. Game on. I wonder if Jim Long's found the dart shop yet. Or is having a practice or a throw. 86. Did bump into him this morning. Went to the museum yesterday and enjoyed a bit of time in Pompey. 95. 96. Just to reiterate, Alex Small would be through with Long if he were to win this match. Not. Wouldn't be yet confirmed as the group winner, but that's sort of a, a bonus prize, isn't it? The first focus is on getting through to finals night. And don't forget, you could be there as well. Tickets are available by a dartshop.tv. 98. All you've got to do to get there is scan that QR code. And if you can join us here in Portsmouth for 7.30 on Saturday. 100. I'd like to require 167. You could have a front row seat for our finals night. And there could be... 61. Jamie required to see Sherrick live in action on Saturday night. She is in Group B tonight. 10pm live on Sporty Stuff TV and the Moda Super Series YouTube channel to see if Sherrick Fancy. makes it. I'd like to require 106. All hoping to close in. Does he stay there? He did, but he got nowhere near. Not to keep the trend going. We've 40. spoken a lot this week about breaks Jamie of throw. Jamie requires 40. Certainly in Group A was one of the patterns. A rise in the percentages of the breaks of throw. That's a long way off. Normally when it's that far off, the next Game one goes straight the in the double. Play. Jamie Kelling. So ironic how that happens all the time. Someone misses by such a distance and pops it in. It's the same when Fifth, I guess someone Alex misses the big first. single. They Game tend on. to then hit the single and then the double afterwards. Shake of the head from 45. Alex. 45. Big game, I think, for, for Kelling in particular. You would say that if he loses a match, it's advantage 10 Berg, wouldn't you? Because he has a already a better leg difference. That would increase just by virtue of the fact that Kelling had lost a game, and then he faces John Brown, who's 60 out of the race. And that would be confirmed if Kelling won this game because he couldn't close the deficit to the top two. 140. Tenberg could try and take advantage of that and put himself in second place. And all the players played their eight 78. Matches. And that would be ahead. 
of a penultimate meeting for him against 94. Kelly. 48. 129. He needed to break the throw at some point. Like, 60. Really struggling in this Jamie one. Rikai, He's a long way 45. back. 45. Two darts. In fact, he's got plenty more than two darts, yeah, but he doesn't Sean need more play. than two darts. That's Jamie all he Kelly. needs. At the double here to get that one wrapped up, put himself one leg away, and just keep this Sick thing. It's Jamie's to throw first. A little bit open. Game on. In terms of... The group winner, the qualification positions. It's making it much, much harder. 29. Oh, Joey Tenberg and Ron Mullenkamp to play much of a part in this. 45. Does that keep Alex Small? 96. A little bit of weight. From sealing his seemingly inevitable qualification. 140. He'll face Ron Mullenkamp in his next game. Things could get a little bit twitchy for Small. No, his final match is against 123. John Brown. So as we said, if Kelling does win this match, would be out of the race officially by then. 140. Still think that match between Kelling and Tenberg is going to have some influence 100. on what happens. Even if Kelling wins this match, it could actually be Tenberg then trying to chase Small in the end. Who knows? 140. Jamie require 153. It's one of those scenarios you see so often in a darts match. One player on a double, one player on a 46. big finish. Alec require 36. The big finish doesn't go. Neither does the double, but that's happy accident. Game shot the sick that. play. And Alex that means Small. that the match goes a distance and Small will have the darts in the decider. Maybe he's just splitting it. Seven and final leg. It's Maybe Alex to throw first. Game on. Quite a distance away that that would be quite a conceivable idea. 39. Quite a rare switch to go straight for the 18s, but... Maybe more understandable for such a fast 60. player than as Alex Small. Who I often think sometimes when he switches to the 19s, goes wayward 94. Quite often. Yeah, that might be the next evolution for his game to be able to get a bit more board mastery and be able to switch around a little bit. 180. No switching needed. Three perfect darts. Dennis Priestley was the big travel 18 switcher, wasn't he, of yesteryear? Remember Eric Claris of Belgium? He was like the first man who switched around quite a lot. And at that point, people said it was the wrong thing to do. A lot of the right things are coming 100. from Jamie Kelling. Jamie in required this last leg 121. A 180 followed by 140 to give himself six starts from 1 2 1. Meaning he doesn't have to go for the bolt. Game but he does, shot and, and he match. hits it. Jamie a Kelly. stunning way to end that match. And Jamie Kelling just produces a fabulous finish and a fabulous leg of darts. A 12 darter to break Small in the decider. One of the poor displays we've seen from Small, but still very much in the match right till the end. Kelling turned it on and goes level on 12 points with Alex Small at the top of the table. And it is going to now take a monumental effort from the chasing pack to dislodge either of those players from the qualification spots. Meet Rob's Grand Mary. She loves nothing more than a day at the seaside and an ice cream. And Rob, well, he wouldn't miss it for the world. By taking timeouts on his account, he's making time for moments that really matter. Winner. Setting it up is simple. Choose from days to weeks at a time or customise it. When you play, play safe at Bet365.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series. And what a monumental victory that could be for Jamie Kelling. And how crucial could that 1-2-1 one, one checkout be in the end game in this table? Because we can have a look at things now. Jamie Kelling and Alex Small then both locked on 12 points. Kelling moving on to the darty dozen with victory there. Joey Tenber can keep things very interesting at the top end of the table. He can move on to 10 points in our next match. He takes on John Brown, who will be looking to pick up some points and to pick up something to end his week on a high with. Watching this one, Matt and Chris. Thank you, Henry. Yes, John Brown now cannot make it through to finals night after that win for Jamie Kelling over Alex Small. The pair tied at the top on 12 points. Joey Tenberg is now the main contender to try and separate that dominance in this group. The pair have been leading from the off, seemingly, despite the odd moment where it looked like Kelling was going to drop out. Indeed, did drop out after losing to Alan Norris in his first match of the day, but could be... First leg, it's John to throw first. After this game. If Brown game can on. get the better of Ten Berg, then the two Dutchmen... Joey himself and Ron Moolenkamp are four points adrift with just four points to play for. The one thing that Ten Berg has in his favour is a leg difference, but he would be relying on more than... 57. ...just beating Jamie Kelling himself. He'd need Kelling or Small to lose both of their games and him to win both of his. 97. So all about just putting the pressure on. As Henry said, if Joey wins this one, he moves on to 10, then he will take on... Jamie Kelling, 59. And despite that victory for Kelling in the previous match, could go above him going into the last round of fixtures. The worst position to be in is in a position 100. where you'll sit back stage and you'll see Alex Small or Jamie Kelling lose a game quite heavy. And then you think back and go, well, if I'd have just won that game and give myself an opportunity. That's this. We're watching that game that you would look back at and go, if I'd have won that game... I could have still been in a position to qualify. And I think the way the week's gone for Joey, I think it'd be... 100. Almost justified for him to get through because of how well he's played. But I also think it's going to just get him thinking a little 140. bit. 140. He has spoke about the finances of travelling and how he struggled with that before in the past. And Joey, you require 84. things he didn't like about the professional game. 62. John, you require 60. I like that about the professional game. I missed out a double, particularly if John Brown punishes him for it. Game shot on the first leg. John Brown. And that's what he does. Can imagine that second leg. It's Joey to throw first. Small and Kelling right now. I've got the feet up in the practice room watching this one. One hundred. Yeah, I think they'll be quite happy with their position. To be honest with you, they're in a position where a little AC bit more five. from them, and they've got it. Or results could go their way, and they might be there already. So very luxury position to be One hundred and forty. In a decent position to level up here. Both players on the same number after nine darts apiece. But no treble just opens the door for 58. Brown. Fifty-eight. Can go both ways, can't it, for a player that's eliminated. They can maybe lose a little bit of mental engagement. Joey, you require 160. Or they can do what is a cliche in darting terms, but... Relax and then play the best stuff. Knowing that the sort of heat of 100. competition has John, gone. you require 160. Yeah, it's where you get to really learn a lot about the players as well. 
Well, most 90. players say they play the best Joey matches requires on the practice 60. board, the best darts on the practice board, and I guess that's what this can become if you, you're not actually playing for anything other than your own performance, your own status. 40. John Brown might be about to double John his lead in this one after 70. those misses from JTB. Should. You know, dart the double. It's going to be double 16. Game shot on the second line. John Brown. John Brown. Two from two on the outer ring. Jerry Tenberg, who needs the points, is in big, big trouble. Third leg, it's John to throw to your first. Point there about on. people saying they play the best stuff on the practice board. I would say that be not ground level. 180. It's more 50 50 than people think. I think when people do interviews, they'll say that. Or when they're asked the 85. question, that's what they say. But when you're actually at ground level going around the practice boards with these players, a lot of them say the total opposite, that actually they play better in games than they do in practice. 57. And for that reason, they don't oh, like practicing too much because it makes them feel they're playing bad. So do you think there are actually a few myths and fables going on? 55. These players that tell you the 11 180s in a row and 6-9 darters in every practice session they play? What I'd say is... Don't always believe what people say in their interviews. 60. There are many myths that could be busted. And it's very interesting being on both sides 96. of the scale. So sitting on the media side, but also then still going down to ground level at times and hearing the complete contrasts. 100. I've actually done interviews like that where I've been chatting to a player off mic and... 73. John, you require 104. Terrible, going wrong and then start the interview. Yeah, very happy. Fantastic. Looking forward to the next round. Well, it's a determination to stay there. Look, Tenberg isn't on a 42. finish. So he didn't have to stay on the treble 16 having blocked it. It's just made this leg a little more awkward than it needed to be. 81. Again John, you require 62. 62. It looks like a small, easy finish. It might still be an easy finish. You've got two darts at the Game double 16. The this is brilliant. Line. John an Brown. Exhibition of doubling from John Brown. Three from three. The one I said it can get tricky is that was a single 10. Like it's it's one to throw dart first. Double. It's Game on. Good as a shot like a 117 or a 106. I think he's going to get 100. a couple of big sweaty palms on his back when he walks into the practice room, John Brown, because look what he's doing to the group. Joe Tenberg would then be in that position where he would be 135. Four behind the top two, but the leg difference was the big thing he had in his armour. He was level on legs with Jamie Kelling, meaning that if he had won this match and then beat Kelling, he'd actually be in pole position of the pair. Instead, John Brown's obliterated it. Small on plus eight. 58. On plus seven. And still four points behind. Joey Tenberg's plus seven will go down to plus three if Brown wins this leg. 60. Well, it's exactly what you said. 98. If he then sees... One of those players slip up in the last couple of games, or if he himself beats Jamie Kelling, you look back at this game and one hundred got the job done there. Yeah, it's a red pen match. As we all know, things wrote in red are important. Forty-four. Joey Could required one hundred one. Joey Tenberg, if he loses it four 0 but that looks less likely now because Brown isn't on a finish. Forty-nine. And Tenberg leaves a simple two data to start what he hopes is more than a, a mini fight back. He hopes this is a complete tungsten turnaround. 56. Joey required 52. How good can he feel about this after missing by that margin? Game shot on the fourth feel good now. Joey Tenberg. Just for a moment, but then you'll remember that he needs to win the next three legs and two of them. They're against the throw. Fifth leg, it's John to throw first. Game on. 
60. That's exactly what you'd wanted to hear in that situation. 100. Anything but a three-figure score would have encouraged him a little bit. Here's it again. That's where the opportunity to break appears. 60. 1 no treble visit with the throw you can get away with 2 you can't 140 100 60 60. He was just starting to write off the chances of Joey Tenberg when he went 3 0 down. It did look like it was 60. all about John Brown. Really struggling to find the treble. Just one treble out of the 12 darts he's thrown. 140. Joey required well, 141. This may have to go, and it's not going to. Brown should get a dart, at least a bullseye to win this match. A win that would... 81. All but... John, you require 81. An end to the race in this group. 12 segment. Oh, he's missed a big number. 54. Just thrown it at the double that he was hoping Joey to leave anyway 60. there. By hunting down the treble. But maybe, maybe he should just have taken care of the Game big number. Game shot on the fifth leg. Tenberg Joey let Tenberg. off the hook. Well, I said he might get a pat on the back by a couple of players. Instead, he might get a punch in the face Six of leg. a couple Joey's of players when he goes first. back in the practice room. Game on. I'm not endorsing it, by the way. 59. I'm just glad that's not a thing. Or else I think I'd have had a few of those over me time. 81. There's no guarantee you're going to hit the bullseye, but give yourself the best chance. I know Paul Nicholson, who commentates here a fair amount, would advocate not even being anywhere 100. near the treble on a shot like that. 1 in this match, he's actually three out of three on his doubles, but to not give himself a go, and he even hit the double thirteen when he went for it, didn't he? Ninety-five. Yeah, but that's been kind of the story for John Brown. He was doing this a lot in his Group A campaign as well. And if we're going to look at something that's let him down, sometimes it comes to the most simplest things, one hundred and forty more complex things, which he will probably put it down to. Well. I think that dart at top, so that one, three, two, or that one, two, four. You always remember those, but you AC forget the five. fact that you've probably missed John, you require big 100. numbers to give yourself even better opportunities. Well, he has responded well. He looks like he's going to put it right. Treble 16 is going to be the route. Afforded that luxury because Tenberg isn't on a finish. He'll change his mind. And you understand that as well. He's looked at the situation again, 60. weighed it up and thought, you know what, scoring 60 is better than missing the treble 16 and leaving a slightly more difficult finish. 130. Well, Joey's done all he can John there. That's a perfect 40. shot for Joey Tenberg. It couldn't have got any better. Game, but he will shot, not like and what the he's in there. John the Brown. game is over a 13-dart leg. But John Brown wraps up one of his best performances of this Group C campaign. It doesn't affect his opportunity for qualifying, but look at those checkout stats. Four from four, 100%. It does, however, affect the chances of Joey Tenberg, who dug deep and brought that back, ended with three perfect darts, but he still walks off the stage with just eight points, leaving Alex Small and Jamie Kellin pulling clear at the top with 12. We've got Alex Small coming up next. He's taking on Ron Muhlenkamp.
Hey, I'm Gary Ashburn, and I've been working in the world of collectibles and memorabilia for over 30 years. I'd love you to join me every Sunday night at 10 p.m. for Collectibles Guru, where we showcase awesome items from the world of sport, music, TV, and film. You'll hear the stories behind the genuine signatures and get a front row seat into the world of sport and showbiz. So tune in every Sunday night at 10 p.m. only here on Sporty Stuff TV. Welcome back to the Super Series. We've just seen a significant result because John Brown could have just ended Joey Tenberg's chances of qualification through to Saturday night's final. 4-2 victory for Brown means that Tenberg has got to win his remaining two matches. But as you can see in that round of fixtures, that is coming up shortly against Jamie Kelly. And that is the final game of this cycle of rounds. So let's see what that does in terms of the league table now because Alex Small, Jamie Kelly, both on 12 points. Joey Tenberg, Ron Moonenkamp, both on eight. And when you have a look at the fixtures that are coming up for that next round of fixtures, it could set things up very interestingly indeed. For Alex Small and Jamie Kelling, it is quite a simple equation now. Win and they are in to Saturday night's finale. And it is Alex Small who is up first, up against Ron Moonenkamp. It's the first of those battles between players on 12 and eight points respectively. Watching this one in the commentary box, Chris and Matt. Yeah, he's been almost there for a while, hasn't he, Alex Small? And would have been there had he got the better of Jamie Kelling. Uh, a win that actually would have done a favour to the likes of Ron Mullenkamp and the man we've just seen, Jerry Tenberg. But Kelling's victory has made it very likely that the top two going into today will be the top two at the end of the day. And if the 24-year-old Welshman can get the victory here, he will seal his spot and join Jim Long at finals night. And in doing so... And any outside hopes that Ron Mullenkamp is still harbouring. First leg, it's Alex to throw first. Game on. Thirty. Mullenkamp really, and, and I say outside hopes. They are the biggest of outside hopes. Really needs to think about margin of victory as well. He has to completely thrash Alex Small here. The good news for him, in a way, is that the two 46. players that he plays are the two players that he's trying to catch. Normally, you wouldn't want to be playing the top two, but in this scenario, that's exactly who you do want to be 140. playing. 140! Yeah, because you'll be putting points on your tally while stopping them from gaining on theirs. It's that leg swing as well, isn't it? If you win 4-0, you, you get an eight-leg swing in one match rather than relying on somebody else to beat them heavily. 180! You've got to feel that Ron Mullenkamp, with where he's been in his darts career and where he wants to get back to being, will probably thrive in this sort of challenge. He'll like this sort of environment. And before the start of this, if you would have told me this situation before watching any darts thrown this week, I'd say that he would conquer 60. this situation, that he'd come through this. Of course, he will still be looking for a favour. 131. Someone else. He and Tenberg have to be perfect and hope that Small and Kelling are the total opposite now. And they lose both of their games. And Kelling's got it pretty tough, in 58. my opinion. I like to require 100. Both of those Dutchmen that are trying to chase him. Alex Small looking at double 10. 80. Ron, you require 150. Well, the bomb is going to need to produce some explosions of excellence in this match. And with every leg he loses, 
133. The flame starts to fade. Alec required 20. He might be losing this one. Alec Small can ping this double 10 up to the fives. 15. There's an opportunity. Ron, you required 24. For Ron Camp. A chance to break the throw. The table topper, Alex Small. We have five darts missed by Alex. Game shot on the first line. Ron Moulinkamp. We'll hold a throw and the bomb breaks in the opener. Second leg, it's Ron to throw first. Game on. Sixty. He has stood up and been countered today, Ron Mullenkamp. Twice he's broke the ninety barrier with his averages. His last match was forty three point fourteen when he beat Alan Norris a couple of games ago. He also won his opening game of the day, that with a ninety average as well, beating John Brown. One hundred and forty. Yeah, we mentioned it at the time that, that the really pivotal match for him was always going to be that battle with Joey Tenberg and look what much 100 better position he'd be in had he won that match well in the last game we explained it as one of those games that Joey Tenberg could look back and go that's the one that made this get away when he was playing John Brown maybe for Ron Mullenkamp we're looking at exactly that 60. situation that if he looks back across the day and goes where did this go wrong that could be the moment where he ended up not being able to win this group or finish second. It could have set up a straight shootout between him and Jamie Kelling in the penultimate match of the day. I think that's one of the things I really enjoy about a group C because it's two positions. 125. There's so many different possibilities and coulds and woulds and shoulds. It's even worse in group B. 100. Ron, yeah, you recall it usually happens 16. quite early for someone and then everyone else is fighting out till the end. In this group, Alex Small in particular has been nearly there for a long time. Game shot on the second he line. He remains nearly Ron there Moulin because Ron Camp. Mullenkamp has got his own ideas here. Fabulous 116 Third leg, it's Alex to throw first. Game on. He doubles his lead. And we talked about it at the start of the match. It's not just about the victory. 99. It may well be about the margin of victory. Alex Moore went into this game on 12 points, knowing a win would put him through with a plus eight leg difference. Ron Mullenkamp 58. went into it on eight points, knowing a win would keep his hopes alive on a zero leg 98. If he wins it 4-0, suddenly that leg difference is the same. And he's two points behind Small with a game to play each. Fifty seven. Ninety five. Wonder if Alex Small's in a position where it feels like he's one win away from probably being in a position that well, he will be guaranteed to go through, but I wonder if he feels like at the moment that he's still in a Eight little bit won. of limbo with his qualification and maybe he doesn't realise he's in as a strong position as he does because the last game and this one's not quite been up to the same sort of fluency as the first two this morning. Yeah, damage done in the opening leg on, on his own throw when he missed five darts, a double again on throw here. He's raced away. 85. I like to require 112. To eliminate from his game. Takes no care with it, and you never know. As I said, small miss five darts at double. 38. Of course, he couldn't have left a finish, but give yourself the best chance. 140 here would be big. It's on, but I don't know if he can squeeze past that. Can he? Can. What a fantastic like dart that is from Rob Mullenkamp. And out of nowhere, he's back in this one. Certainly now. Double 10. 54. I'm just going to go back to that dart, though, that Rob Mullenkamp played. That found the treble. He'd be on tops now. He'd have three darts at double rather than the one that he's going to get here. And that one is a small portion of the double. Just shows take care with every dart. 
Faulty. Because he would have given himself a better opportunity later Alec in the leg than he actually 20. got. And it might well be the difference between winning Game and losing on the, the third leg because he has lost the leg. Alex Small. Fourth leg, it's Ron to throw first. Game on. You said it to me early on when we started commentating on Mulan Camp yesterday that you've been doing that kind of thing all week. That just last start when he's not happy with the visit and just tosses it without any real care or direction. 96. Yeah, he's done it literally all week. He'll be hoping that he can do it for a little bit longer, though. And I don't just mean this game and one more. He's going to be wanting to be back here tomorrow night where the big bucks will be dished out. One hundred and twenty-five. Well, he's got to do his part first, and that includes beating Alex Small and beating him by the biggest possible 96. margin. Ninety-six. Every leg that he wins here, he will take off of Alex Small. It's a double swing. All points count as two in the leg difference column. Eighty-five. Ninety-five. One hundred and forty. Alex required one hundred and seventy. Back end of the leg here from Ron Mullenkamp to leave him on something handy. He will get a shot to fifty-five. Hold on to his throw Ron required leg fifty-five. Away from a big, big victory. So two at tops, yeah, this time a clear target, play. no traffic to stop him, and Moulinkamp motors on. Fifth leg, gets Alex to throw first, game on. Now we were talking about earlier, 55, that Moulinkamp, Tenberg might look back at a match. This group, it could happen, that he actually looks back at a leg, just that one leg that he loses to Alex Small in this game. Could end up being the difference between the qualifying noise. How tight things can be in the particularly in these shorter groups where you only have two days play. One hundred. Certainly can happen on finals night when you only have two matches in a group. Completely different environment on those first couple of games on a Saturday compared to the rest of the week. Really do 96. feel like every leg matters. And sometimes take a little bit out of actually, even if you lose 4-3, you can still feel you're in quite a good position. 134. 58. Ron, you require well, 87. To wrap up the win and keep small away. The chequered flag has been on standby, but it's not yet waving. And Ron Moulinkamp has once shot. again stopped and Small in his tracks. Ron a full one success for Moulinkamp, and it's two defeats on the spin. The man who was leading the league is actually been leapfrogged by Jamie Kelling as a result of that defeat. But look at the performance from Ron Moulinkamp when he really needed to. He has pulled it out. A 97 average. That is the best we've seen today. 116 check out the high in there as well. And the finishing was sublime. Four out of six. And it keeps Ron in the race. This is the final straight. Your horse is challenging for the lead. The victory is so close you can taste it. This magnificent animal giving everything for his jockey. And in the last strides, your horse is beaten. Fortunately, with Coral, you'll get a free bet up to £10 if your horse finishes within a length of the winner. Available every day of the season. Coral.
where Ron the Bomb is causing carnage here in Group C as he gets the better of Alex Small by four legs to one. And as you can see, Alex Small is no longer top of the table, deposed by Jamie Kelling on legs difference. And he is precariously looking over his shoulder now because Camp on 10 points. And because of the size of that victory, the legs difference has very much come into play now. Right, next up for us, it is John Brown up against Alan Norris. Neither of these two can make it through to Saturday night's final. So it is a case of playing for pride and giving us a bit of a show here at the Super Series. Watching this one, Chris and Matt. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, two players that campaign is done and dusted for John Brown. Just been a few too many wayward darts at the wrong times, a few too many missed singles for Alan Norris. Been a bit of a torrid campaign. It's been tough going for him here at the Super Series. He did kick off today quite well, a 91.26 average when he was looking to climb the mountain, as it would say, across his social media first pages. First leg, it's Alan to throw first. Game on. But the mountain was a little bit too big for him to climb. He sits bottom of the table and looks like he's going to end the day. Bottom of the table as well. We know that's a position Alan Norris would not want to be in. As no player would like to. 57. Sit bottom of the table. Someone's got to be there, unfortunately for Alan. It's him this week. I'm sure we'll see him again in a future Super Series event. I'm sure we're going to be seeing him play plenty of darts this year. He is. 76. Out on the circuits at the moment, playing plenty of darts. He's doing his exhibitions as always. He's playing in the Challenge Tour, the World Seniors. 84. So there's going to be plenty of darts thrown. And there'll probably be plenty of darts thrown in this match. He'll chop and change throughout different sets of equipment, you'll see. No real difference in the grip patterns. They've got a slightly different colour on the barrels. 43. But in terms of the length, the setup, absolutely the same. He just likes picking up different sets all the time. Yeah, 60. Quirk of Alan Norris. Different players have them. You've mentioned some already this week. Stuart Kelly. Put his darts in the fridge. Alan, you require 157. The players will more dramatically change their darts. 125. Alan Norris has certainly changed his attitude, it seems, today. Not that there's anything wrong with yesterday, but just... 100. Came in as a determined man, and despite that... Alan, you require 32. Impossible becoming exactly that. Game shot the first on in that lane, lane, hasn't he? Shown Alan that Norris. fight even since being eliminated. Some people Second would say that's John to old throw school first. mentality, but just shows the competitiveness of Alan Norris and the pride he takes in this game. 80. Clearly wants a little bit more. He's not happy with what's behind him. He's probably delighted with what's behind him, to be fair, but he wants a bit more of that 140. in his future. Seeing him at these qualifiers for the seniors, trying to get into... Events such as the World Championship, the, the match play, the Masters that is coming up just 60. next week. Very amiable chap as well. Lovely fella to be around, Alan Norris. 140. He's there, smile on his face and a conversation for anyone. It's like he didn't want that flight, but it's probably because he's got another 20 sets of darts already set up. He could have just grabbed one of those. Yeah, if a dart dropped on the throw, i ah, just leave it. Imagine that, actually, if he, he did, you say Gettering Price dropped darts all the time. Instead of doing his back in, just walked to the table and picked another one up. 100. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he doesn't like picking up the darts when he's at home, so he just has lots of different sets, so he can just oh, have to get another one. Here's a question for you. Maybe a challenge you challenge you should actually 121. set someone Just see if Norris is up to this challenge first. Bullseye. 96. I'm sure you've done that thing, haven't you, where you've put three darts in the treble 20 and then you've just picked up another set and thrown another three darts. How many have you ever got in? Have you ever recorded that? 
So I did a little game. I'll... 60. Alan, you're required. 25. I call it the nine dart game. So I've obviously got lots of sets of my own personal darts. And what I did, yeah, I got shot nine the second darts lay. of my Alan own darts. Norris. And I had to hit a nine darter with it, but all the darts had to be in. So you needed like the seven trebles all in Third the same leg, time. Third leg, it's to throw first. Now the only rule game is on. you get to throw all nine darts. And as long as you hit one part of the combination, you get to take the misses out and throw them again. So if I go to get two treble twenties, I get to take out the seven misses. I get to throw those. If I hit a treble twenty, I take out the six misses and I keep going until I can do the shot. Now, if you get down to four darts and you miss all four darts and you don't hit part of the combination, you take all nine out and you, you throw again. It's just a little bit of fun, but it also gets you used to playing 85. around darts and playing through congestion. Ever done it first time? No. It's a very, very tough game to get seven darts in the treble. And then when you've got that, you've got to pick off the 40. 19 and the, the 12 with just one dart in hand most of the time. A fun little 45. challenge. 45. Try it at home. Might give some of the players here some little fun challenges to take on, and that could be one of them. Maybe you should be the... 60! The tungsten Taskmaster, Mr. Edgar. That sounds right up my street and something I'm sure the viewers would like to see. Yeah, it's purely... 83. A game. John, you require the difference between the word practice game and training game is very, very different. Practice game is just doing the things you know, but in an environment that's just going to cause a bit of an obstacle. 65. The exact same thing when I was coaching football, that one of the first things I'd do is give them all the ball and put them in a very tight, congested area. Because 45. Are John, you require 96. Will most likely be your strikers because they're comfortable being in a congested box. Same thing with this. It's just playing with congestion. 56. A, a training aid. It's just something that's a bit of a practice routine. 105. He swapped his John, you require 40. In this game hasn't done any, any harm so far. Brown looking to do him a little bit of harm here by breaking his throat. But he 30. can't do it. Has he got Alan, his doubling darts? Alan, you require 60. That's the danger, isn't it? When you change so much, you're going to get an affiliation to certain darts for certain Game tasks. shot on the third line. Oh, these are his doubling Alan darts. Norris. Is it two doubles in that combination? 50% for Alan Nollis. Fourth leg, it's John to throw first. Game on. The game he won. Match number one. Number six in total, but match number one of today. It's four from nine in that one. 93. You get the feeling, though, Alan Norris will probably, if he was to see a look for victory and come off the stage with a good, solid victory against John Brown, he probably wouldn't come off and go, ah, oh, it's nice to have finally shown a little bit of what I can do here. He'll probably walk off and be like, where was you 60. this time yesterday? Yeah, we, we, we spoke about it in the last match, didn't we? That some players are going to look back at legs. 95. Some are look back at matches. You might look back at as a whole day. 60. We'll see him again soon at the Motor Super Series. Alan Norris, certainly plenty to offer. We've seen 123 of that this afternoon. A big supporter of the World Seniors Tour as well. He was playing in Newbury, actually, last weekend before heading back to Scotland. And then heading down here, the seven-and-a-half-hour drive to Portsmouth. 85. One hundred. Alan, you require 153. Would have been a great way 77. to win 77. John, you're requiring 91. Can't see the double anyway. But in going outside, he's just made it a little tricky. For him. I wonder if he might even persevere at double 51. Double Alan, you're requiring 76. Just for lols. 
Well, that's what he intended to do. 56. Didn't quite pull it off. John, you require 40. John Brown has been very restricted to Game a shot on the come. fourth leg. We dart in a double. But it's not going to affect the outcome of it. Good turnover there from John Brown. Fifth leg. It's Alan to throw first. Throw. Game on. And you feel with a little bit more concentration and thought, Alan Norris should have at least had an extra dart at a double there. 180. The change of darts results in the first 180. 26. For Alan Norris in this match, a department where he has been immensely improved to date. Well, these must be his 180 darts, these 60. sort of silvery looking ones. And now he's going to the mid-leg darts. He, he doesn't fancy a 180. 140. A 140 with these. I he's, think these would be the bronzy ones. Yeah, they're the 140 darts. Not working. Change them. 43. Change them, Alan. I think these are the set-up and finishing darts, but maybe he changed it a bit too quick. Yeah, you can see him there berating himself for it. 60. Now, in this position, these darts will deliver exactly what he wants. Disobedient, aren't they, These this pair? 58. Need to go back in their box. Well, I said there was a setup and finishing darts, and he set it up. He's going for the big finish darts now. 85. Alan, you require 160. There is a right tool for every job. Has Alan Norris found his? Game, Bang on shot, the money. and the match. The big finish. Alan Norris. From the tungsten tinkerer that is Alan Norris. A 4-1 success to blow away Brown and pick up a second win in the group. Decent performance as well. Average just shy of 88. 50% on the checkouts, including... That enormous 160 out at the end of the match. Right, when we return, we go back to that race at the top of the table. Jamie Kelling, a win away. Joey Tenberg can make it very, very interesting if he can get the victory in that one. Meet Rob's Grand Mary. She loves nothing more than a day at the seaside. And an ice cream. A Rob... Well, he wouldn't miss it for the world. By taking time outs on his account, he's making time for moments that really matter. Winner. Setting it up is simple. Choose from days to weeks at a time, or customise it. When you play, play safe at Bet365. Welcome back to the Super Series, where it looks like Chuck has found his rhythm, hitting a 160 finish to get the better of John Brown by four legs to one. But now we go to the top of the table because that race for finals night plays is intensifying by the second. Jamie Kelling, top of the table on 12 points. Victory for him would be enough to go through to tomorrow night's finale. As for Joey Timberg, a victory for him would mean that four players would be separated by just two points going into the last round of matches here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. It is poised perfectly in Pompey. And watching this one, it is Chris Murphy and Matt Edgar. Well, it is poised perfectly. Absolutely right, Henry, but it could be poised 
Even more first perfectly. leg, it's Jamie it's to throw Tenberg first. Gets a win here. Game on. It's basically the same scenario we saw a couple of games ago with Alex Small and Ron Mullen Camp Kelling. Four points clear of Ten Berg, but if Joey gets a win, he will move two points off the man who opened with a maximum. And it'll go down to the last set of fixtures. 140. Alex Small and Jamie Kelling looking for victories to go through, but the, the big sort of standout 96. thing is that Kelling is playing both of those players that are chasing him. Ten Berg here, Mullen Camp in his last match. This all comes down to what way do you look? Do you 100. look over your shoulder and go, oh, no, I've actually got the two players that are chasing me down. If I lose these, they're back in the race. Or do you look at it and go, I've got two fixtures. And all I've got to do is win one of them. And as long as I can win one of my last two fixtures, I'm going to be through. Well, also, the same goes in reverse for him. If he wins, he stops them winning, doesn't he? Stops that Jamie Require 167. Kicks him over the cliff edge. A 180 to start this match. A 167. 142. Won the first leg. Joey Require 121. Can Ten Berg get a dart at the same target? It's going to be a dart at the ball. 96. Yes. Jamie required 25. Three tumblers checkouts already in this group. He will not add to that in this leg. And Kelling, taking his time, knows the significance of the situation. Game shot on the first Gets leg. The result. Jamie Kelling. A little mini fist pump there as well for Jamie Kelling. I accept that that is going to grow as Second this leg, game goes on. To throw first. It's closer to the winning line. 100. Mentioned about Ten Berg in three tumblers finishes. He also hit five. 140. In his group A campaign. Biggest finish draw of them all was at 129. He hit that 100. in this group, group C. Sixty. Ninety-seven. Well, regardless of what happens in this match and the fate of Joey Tenberg, it has been a very good campaign. It's probably been more than he would have expected coming into this in terms of the line of performance, considering this is the first time we've seen him since 2016. He 100. plays a little bit of local darts. He can go a long period of time where he doesn't even pick up the darts. The only tournament play he gets is his national tournament, the Dutch Open, which he still Joey regularly attends. 104. Staying there. Just saw... 56. Tenberg Jamie missed the ball for the one, two, one in the previous leg. Kelling now trying to hunt down that checkout. And he's going to get a dart at the same target. So 85. Can't find it. Joey required 48. Joey turned away there as well. He couldn't watch. 16. Two. More darts missed there from Joey Tempo. Joey required 36. Kellen, three darts in hand. This is for a break. One more opportunity. Game shot on the second leg. And that's Jamie all he Kelly. needs. I said it'll get bigger. He's gone from one fist pump to sort of like a double fist pump with the arms. Third leg, it's Jamie to throw to first. to see some form of raw. Game on. If he is able to convert this one. The one thing he's doing as well... He's putting legs on the board, so even if Joey Tenberg does start to rattle in some big stuff towards the end 100. of this one, the damage will be limited. 180! Defiant Dutch darting. 60. 
140. One hundred. Kelling is. He said that yesterday. One hundred and forty. He's always looked calm this week, hasn't he? Never really looked like he's sort of flapping at any point. And he's got that demeanour about him here in a match that would ninety-nine see him through. Jamie requires sixty-one. Game show on the third lay. Jamie Kellen. Said, what way do you look? Do you look forwards or do you look back? Do you look over your shoulder or Fourth do you look ahead? Fourth leg, to throw first. It's safe Game to on. say that Jamie Kellen is only looking forward and looking for the victory. And Joey Tenberg, it's not like he's not producing 60. here. An average of 97. That one just drops with that 60, which is his best performance of the day so far. 98. He's been completely resisted at the moment by Jamie Kellen. 140. 77. One leg away. The Andover race from qualifying for finals night. On Saturday now, if you happen to be a friend or family member of Jamie Kelling, then we better tell you how to get tickets because he didn't bother to tell you last time, did he? Fifty-five. Didn't Joey you required one hundred and sixty-one on, on Saturday. But if there is a next leg, ninety. We'll, we'll flash up the QR code that you need to scan. It looks like there will be a next leg. Ball with the last dart. 101. So 101 Joey requires to 71. Just in case Tenberg doesn't take this out. Now that 101 on the thinking might force him to go for the ball and 25 here. He does. Game shot on the fourth Brilliant play. finish there from Joey, Joey Tenberg. Tenberg. Keeps himself in this one. A 15 dart to answer back to 15. Fifth leg. It's Jamie to throw first. Match. Game on. So as promised, friends and family of Jamie Kelling in particular, but anybody who can make it to Portsmouth tomorrow night or any Saturday night for our finals, just scan that QR code. Get yourself down here to the live lounge on London Road. Address details all on the website. Tickets absolutely free, but for a very small booking fee. 100. And you can be watching the finals night as the Super Series Super 6, battle it out for the £5,000 weekly winner's check and the place at Champions Week. And that Champions Week finals night, seven weeks away, that is always well attended, usually a sellout. So 45. make sure if you want to be at any of the weekly finals nights, you do get your tickets. If you're a bit old school, just go to your computer, fire up the internet. And type in www.dartshop.tv. That's old school these 42. days. 42. Joey, you require 41. managed to get it done before the end of the leg, even though the leg is this good from Joey Tenberg, although that dart is not that good. Game shot on the that fifth one play. Is, Joey Tenberg. Is a tide turning. Well, that one pushes the average over the 100 mark up to 102. Six, it's Joey to throw a very first. Very impressive scoring phase. Game when you on. need to break the throw, 140, 180, 140, there's not much you can do to repel that. 100. 60. Oh, I feel a bit bad now. All those friends of Kelling. 100. They've just booked tickets to finals night, and he might not be there. Come on, Jamie, get it done. 100. 140. 
Well, Joey is digging very deep. And he's really coming out with some big stuff here. 55. Joey, you require 161. Seven scores of 140. Ninety-seven. Average around the hundred and four. It was all looking so good for Jamie Kelly at three nil up. One hundred. Joey, you require sixty-four. Joey Tembo's 64. got six darts at sixty-four to level us up at three apiece. Thirty-two. He would need to find a breaker throw in the last. But he's certainly producing the standard. I would suggest. 140. Joey, you require 32. We're getting this game won. Kelling has been a match away. He's been a leg away for much of this match. 24. And now he's 46 points Jamie away. Jamie, you require 46. Bergs. Face reflects the fact that he feels the writing is on the wall. Not sure that 10 was the target. Maybe just threw in that direction to give himself a chance of any double. It's double nine. Game and it's shot. In. And, the and match. Jamie, Kelly Jamie Kelly is in finals night. And he knows it. In getting there, he eliminates Joey Tengberg. Kelling pleased with what he's achieved. And he will be back at finals night, having been the champion last time he was there. And he's done it with an average 10 points less than that of Tenberg, who really threatened a fight back in that game. But finally, Jamie Kelling gets over the line and is the first through from Group C to the Saturday session. He could be joined by Alex Small if he can get the better of John Brown after the break. Catch the best thoroughbred racing from South Africa alongside 15 live greyhound races at 11 o'clock every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday morning live here on Sporty Stuff TV. Welcome back to the Super Series. Well, our first qualifier for Saturday night through Group C is up here on the balcony. Jamie, we need to stop making this such a common occurrence, haven't we? Many, many congratulations. You're back at finals night. I know. People start talking, won't they? Hey? They're <laughs> all talking about Jamie at the minute, no, aren't they? I don't know about that. Um, no, it was, really, it was really tough today. I spoke to you off camera, obviously, and it's, it's almost hard being at the top because there's pressure on you to get through when you had such a good start. But, you know, I've managed to blag my way through. I'll bring a tribe tomorrow. I'll bring a tribe. You bring the tribe through, as you say, you get through to today. Is it, when you lose that first game against Alan, what's going through your mind at that point? Uh, honestly, I lost the first game yesterday. That's what mm -hmm. I was thinking, and I managed to get through. So no panic stations, you've got plenty of time, and, you know, you, you are watching the table and you are watching the results, but, you know, it was in my hands, and that's all you can ask for. I was going to say, was there a point today when you're looking at that table and you're looking over it, but curious, or did you feel like whatever you did, you could control your own fate? I knew it was, I knew it was in my hands, but at the same time, you know, it's just common, 
you know, you, you want it to be easier than it actually is, don't you? But yeah, I was looking, but at the, at the same time, I just think just win your game and you're through, and it's as simple as that. Well, let's show you the table now and confirm your place into Saturday night's night. Now, you haven't won the group as of yet, but you are through on that 14 point mark. But I suppose that was the first objective, wasn't it? Just to make sure you get back in no matter what Saturday night. Absolutely. And I think once you get to Saturday, it's anyone's game, isn't it? It's, you know, it's two groups of three and it's anyone's game. And, you know, I've been there, done it before. Luckily, I managed to win a night. So I know what it feels like. And, you know, I want to prove that it wasn't a fluke as well, because I think a lot of people thought, you know, who's this Jamie kid? I want to prove it isn't a fluke and, you know, I want to give it a good go. Do you feel like, Jose, that, that point to prove that even though you've won it before, it's actually given you more motivation to, to prove that you can do it again? Yeah, absolutely. I think before I won it, there was always question marks like, who's Jamie? Like, why is he in this mode of thing? Then when I won it, it's, I think it's in my own head, to be fair. And I'm like, you know what, let's do it again. Like, <laughs> let's prove that wasn't a fluke and do it again. But I think it's almost like competition within your own head. I don't, I don't think that's unhealthy. I think you know, the Michael Jordan documentary on mm -hmm. Netflix, he, he almost created rivalries in his own head to be better. And I think, I think that's healthy, but, you know, let's see what happens tomorrow. Does it disappoint you when you hear comments like that after you won last time? Uh, it doesn't disappoint me. I don't, I don't really care, to be honest. Like, I've I done it. Uh, no one can take that away from me, and I'm proud of what I've done. And, and to be fair, it's probably the biggest achievement I've done in darts. Mm -hmm. um, I'm privileged to be pl part of this modus thing, and I'm happy to be part of it all the time. Um, but, yeah, people can... People, are, there's, there's always going to be negative comments. Yeah. And what, whatever you do, there's always going to be negative people. But, you know, you take it on the chin, do what you do. And as long as you're happy in your own life, who cares what everyone else says? Exactly. And you're happily into tomorrow night's scenario. As you say, you're going you're gonna to bring the clan down this time. You're not going to leave it secret squirrel once again. I'm going to tell people this time. Let's see how that works. If it don't work, I'll... I'll be quiet next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jamie Kenning is into tomorrow night's final, and I'd imagine you might want to get the tickets quick because Jamie is going to bring the whole gang down for that finale. And we've got a thrilling finale as far as Group C is concerned. Let's remind you what has happened so far today at the Live Lounge in Port. So we know Jamie Kenning is through, courtesy of that 4 2 victory against Joey Timber. We go down to the final round of fixtures now. It sees Alex Small in action first up against John Brown. Victory for him in that one would mean that. He would also secure his place into tomorrow night's finale, and that would mean the final two games would be dead rubbers. However, a win for John Brown, and it is all to play for. But as far as Jamie Kenning's concerned, and relax. I know you've got one more game to go, but as you know now, after tonight, what's, what's going to be the preparation going into tomorrow? So we just stay, have a nice bit of food, spend some little time with the family, and, you know, just relax. All you can do is relax and enjoy it. It's a game of darts at the end of the day, isn't it? Exactly that. We'll see you a little bit later on, but we're looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow night. Jamie Kellen, then, your group winner there. So let's get into those final rounds of matches now and see Alex Small in action, see whether he can book his place into finals night. Watching this one, Matthew Edgar and Chris Murphy. Thank you very much, Henry. It's nice to hear from Jamie Kelling. Just another game to play after this one. And whether or not that game is significant will depend on this one. John Brown... He's taking on Alex Small, who, like Kelling, is going into the match, needing a win to qualify. But if he loses the game, there is still a possibility of Ron Moulinkamp sneaking past Small. He plays Jamie Kelling in his last match. Kelling already threw. Wonder if Kelling uh, relaxing. Will first be music leg, to the ears of Ron Mullenkamp ahead of that game one. On. But first of all, it's all about Small, isn't it? Win and you are in. If Alex Small wins this one, the rest of that's pretty irrelevant anyway. It doesn't matter if Ron Mullenkamp then went and beat Jamie Kellin. 91. And look back through the way the day's gone. And 58. Actually, in terms of that short term form, it's very hard to really make a solid case for. Alex Small getting the job done in this one. He's lost his Fancy last two so. matches. He also is 4-3 and 4-1. But a slight concern around the doubling stats today for Alex Small. Second game, the 4 from 20, the 16 missed darts. It was also 125. One the last game in which he lost. So it's a little bit Hit and miss at the moment. 96. And he's certainly not finding that big score in power like he was in match one and two. 
100. Sixty. John, you require one hundred and forty-three. The demeanour of Kelling. I think Smalls looked a little bit the opposite. And and you made an interesting call you, earlier on. You said, "Does he know that he's one win away?" And since that point, that's when he has looked a bit more sort of panicked and it's almost he, he plays fast anyway. But John, I, I would say almost 56. in a rush to get the job done. I would also say very reactive, reactive to negativity. It's like the negativity grows within him at the moment rather than the wrong way. He could just brush it away. It's like it plants, plants that seed and it's just building. 140. Don't mind that play trying to hit the 180 to get Charlie to belt out that 180. Game shot on the first leg. A little bit. John John Brown. Looking to bring him down with him. Second leg, it's Alec to throw first. Yeah, he was beaten heavily in his last match. John Brown, 4 1 by Alan Norris. Lost to Ron Mullenkamp, 4 2 in his first. To Jamie Kelling, 4 3. But did inflict a big blow on one of the players, Joey Tenberg, when he beat him 4 2. That was just about the point it got away from Tenberg, although officially it got away from Joey in that last match, a defeat to. 100. Forty four. One hundred. Ninety three. Forty-three. Well, he did get himself a little bit of a cushion here, Alex Small, but that forty-three. One hundred and forty. That little bit of a cushion whipped away from him. He only 52. needed a little bit more to confirm himself over the line. He's just been unable to find it. 65. Alec can require 146. He can still qualify, even if he loses this match. 96. John, you require 130. I'd be looking at Jamie Kelling to do him a favour. We're a long way from having to worry about those possibilities. 97. Let's Alec see how the double is for Alex Small in this one. 50 left. It's going to be two darts at double 16. Game shot on the no second problem. leg. Alex Small. A level game. But it's all on throw at the moment. Alex is going to need to find a break of throw like somewhere here throw against first. John Brown. Game on. He still has a job to do. Alex, well, he's looked like a... 60. A winner, a potential finalist all throughout this group. His position has never really looked in, in threat in the same way that Jamie Kelly's has. He dropped out earlier today. He lost his first match of the day to Alan Norris, but has bounced back since Jamie Kelling. 60. But Alex Small. It would be really cruel. 133. It, to be in such a promising position, then to lose three games on the spin to take it down to the last one. 60. And just to make you aware of leg difference, there is two legs between him and Ron Mullenkamp. Of course, two points as well. So Mullenkamp would have to beat Kelling. But that leg difference could even be in his favour by the end of this match. And we'll make you aware of exactly what needs to happen. 59. Alex required 93. In the short term, what needed to happen was Alex Small needs to put a big leg in on a leg where John Brown thrown first. Game shot on the third leg. A 12 Alex Small. start leg for Alex Small right on cue. Huge moment. Fourth leg, it's Alex to throw first. Not just in this match. Game on. But in this group. Ron Mullenkamp will be very, very interested. 100. In the outcome of this one. He'll be hoping that John Brown can pick up his fourth victory of this group. He has won three matches.
59. However, only one of them has been today. That was earlier on. 85. When he beat Joey Tenberg and pretty much eradicated any hopes on Joey Tenberg from qualifying through from this one. 43. Falsy four. Ninety three. Eighty five. Attention was to try and find the bull or twenty five, but didn't get near that. But he is in a strong position here. And it could mean the last two 84. games are fixture-fulfilling fights rather than finals night fights. 55. 18s is the short to ensure 94. a finish is left. I like to require 132. I think the treble as well has just given Brown more of a chance, hasn't it? 96. John, you require 128. Treble 20 for the ball. He missed this for a 130 in the last. 97. This is it again in this one. It's all Alec about Alex Small. 36. He's put himself a Game leg Sean away from confirming Alex his Small. position in Saturday night, joining Jamie Kelly, who's currently top of the table, and Jim Long, who's already qualified through Fifth Group A. John to throw first. Game on. And at that point, we would then start thinking about turning our attentions towards Group B that starts this evening, where we complete our six-player field. Three players, the top three, will be Falsy joining four. Kelling. Long, and at the moment, it's looking like small. 60. 96. 140. Yeah, it's getting closer and closer. Potential will, ret will, well, will return to Group B, I suppose. I could have just said that instead of drawn attention to the fact that I made a mistake. 100. But Sean McDonald is the man in pole position in that group. And then we've got three players on four points. Behind him on six. Barry Van Pierce, Scott Taylor and Balance Sherrick. And Lee Budget on two. So basically everybody very much in the hunt in that particular group tonight. 10 p.m. UK time, that is. I know many of you watch around the world on the Motor Sub Series YouTube channel. And as always, live. 137. On Alex, on Sporty Stuff 118. TV. Alex Moore looking to get to Saturday night. He ain't there yet. 78. John, you require 70. Ron Mullen Camp will be watching the screen and hoping that this double 16 goes in. 38. It doesn't. And that could be. All she wrote. Alex required 40. Is this Alex Small's big moment? Game it shot is. and the match. It's a 4-1 win over John Brown that sees Small through to Saturday. He's been a finalist before on that stage at a finals night and he's going to go there again alongside Jamie Kelling. A couple of defeats, a couple of stumbles from Small, but he does in the end, secure a spot in Saturday's session and he's in contention for the £5,000 first prize and a place at Champions Week. He joins Kelling and Long. Two more matches to come in this group. However, Ron Mullenkamp will take on the qualified Kelling after the break. This is the final straight. Your horse is challenging for the lead. The victory is so close you can taste it. This magnificent animal giving everything for his jockey. And in the last strides, your horse is beaten. 
Unfortunately, with Coral, you'll get a free bet up to £10 if your horse finishes within a length of the winner. Available every day of the season. Coral. And so it's all wrapped up as far as Group C qualification is concerned. Alex Moore getting the better of John Brown by four legs. One means that he's going to join Jamie Kelling at finals night on Saturday evening. That is how the table squares up. Then Kelling and Small both on 14 points. Jamie still have one more game to play. He can make it on the 16 if he gets the better of one Mooner camp who's just seen his chances of potentially going through via the back door dismantled by that win for Alex Moore last time out. Right, watching this one in the commentary box, Chris Murphy, Matthew Edgar. Yeah, thanks, Henry. Jamie Kelling looking to be the table topper. And we'll do so with victory here over Ron Mullenkamp, who is looking to sign off on a high. It's been a, a case of what might have been for Ron the Bomb on his maiden visit to the live lounge here in Portsmouth. And Jamie Kelling, well, he's going to be back in action on Saturday, having won a week before. And this time, he's going to tell his friends and family all about it. And why shouldn't he? A very good campaign for him. It'll be nice to see them down here tomorrow night, supporting Jamie Kellen, seeing if he can repeat the feat, which he had last time winning the gr weekly title. First leg, it's Ron to throw first. Game on. Could be winning the group title here in this one against Ron Mullenkamp. Ron Mullenkamp, this is the last time we're going to see him in this series. We've seen him all week. He will be disappointed with how the week has gone. 66. I'm pretty sure that we're going to see him here again. And I'm pretty sure we'll probably see him get a bit more success the next time that he joins us. 93. Here in Portsmouth for some Super Series darts. It was interesting listening to Jamie Kelly, wasn't it? And listening to sort of the battles he almost has with himself. And this is something that's very common. People... Sort of really worrying about 95. what people think or what people sort of perceive them as or how they're viewed in the darting world. He was talking a lot in that interview about 96. wanting to prove to people that it wasn't a one-off and sort of worried what people were saying about him. 96. I think we're going to see this quite a lot with some of the younger generation that sort of 134 in that world of constant interaction faulty one well how do people feel in this uh, it's contrasting situations kelling's kind of eat he could be forgiven for wandering around the stage with a big beaming smile on his face, saying to Ron, as the great Jim Bowen used to say, look what you could have won. Now, about seven weeks ago in the Group B, Jamie week required 12 44. of the last series, to be precise, there was a very similar situation where there was a player that had already Game qualified the through first to... Play. Saturday Jamie Kelly. final. And he was going into one of the last games. I believe it was Second an leg, it's Jamie parking. to throw first. Game and on. If he'd have won, he'd have won the group. And you could have said the same sort of situation. Richie Parking couldn't have qualified at that point. This player who... 125. Went into that game, but all he was bothered about was winning the group because it wasn't just about qualifying. And I'm pretty sure that Jamie Kelly's in the same situation as that player was that 100. day. 100. Where it was all about just winning the group. 
It does mean something eight. to people. Yeah, it certainly does. It certainly does. And of course, there are, I mean, there are meant to be advantages. I don't matter how much stock you put in that of the position you play on finals night or the None. other players that are coming in. No? None at all, no. Uh, well, that's the end of that 56. conversation. Then. I, I think most of the time there's no real preference to who you're playing on those finals nights. And I don't see there's that much difference between a lot of the players. Sometimes it can 57. matter about like, the pace of the players. But again, that doesn't necessarily dictate in terms of the positions. How many times do we see a Group A winner come in and get knocked out in the first phase? 180! Millicamp wanting to go out of the bank. The 180 doesn't leave him any kind of out shot. A simple 100 or a 91 even. 57. Leave Kelling on a finish, but he can't find a treble. See, that's the first time I think you could have... I think you could have said he's wanting to go out with a boom. Hmm. 90. I know you're the type of person that likes to brag, <laughs> but <laughs> just say it as it is. But when you were here as a, as a group winner, Ron, you require 75. Is that kind of what's in box? So you're turning up on a Saturday night and at least one other person in the field, you've already had a better campaign than. 55. Obviously, if you come through Group B, it's at least two people. Yeah, I think when it gets to Saturday, I don't think anyone in there really references where there was in their positions. 58. I mean, granted, when it was Ron coming around on the TV, 20. I made everyone look when I was coming up. I was like, oh, look, Group winner. And, but yeah, other than that, no one really Game notices shot on the any second different. Low. No one comes in. Oh, I've got camp. the Group A winner tonight. And it's... Players playing like you've got all third leg. It's Ron to throw first. Game on. Surprised you heard about me winning that group. Actually, heard about it from one person in particular quite frequently. (laughs) One hundred and eighty. In fact, I saw you once telling people in the queue at a bus stop. <laughs> Should have seen me in the supermarket this morning. AC3. Yeah, checkout 5 is now open. Talking of checkouts. <laughs> 100. Well, Jamie Kelling would like to secure that group victory. Looking at the numbers, even if it, he lost this one for three. It would be enough to see him top the group. 85. You do that on legs one. The leg difference between him and Alex Small, whose campaign has finished, would be the same. 57. was an interesting interview as well, wasn't it, that he spoke about maybe having a bit of an imposter syndrome last time he was here, and now he's actually starting to feel like he belongs. 87. I think he was right, though, that Jamie a lot of it's probably only in his own head. 64. Probably a few of his own sort of 60. insecurities being portrayed 106. through other people's voices, so to speak. Maybe he's hearing conversations that aren't actually happening. Yeah, and it can be one message on social media that 62. you focus on. Rather Jamie than 100 require 104 messages. I'll give you a bit of a... In fact, I'm not going to make you wait. I'm going to do it now. Rodney require 44. If you walk down the street in the morning and you can pass 100 Game people... Game on the third leg. Ron Moolenkamp. 99 of them say good morning to you. By the time you get to about number 50, you get fed up of saying good morning. It becomes a burden. Oh, it's Jamie to, to throw you. first. But that one person who calls you a name and tells you we don't like you, you're going to stop. And you're going to have a conversation with that person to first of all see where it stems from. And then you're probably going to see if you can change their opinion. And you'll forget about the 99 people. They're a burden to you, those 99 people that are wishing you a good morning. And you'll spend all your time and attention on the one person that got something not positive to say. Yeah, it's a a good point. You notice the thing that's different, don't you? 125. Remembering the negative, it's probably because positives are more common. 
Horoscopes is another good example of that. 58. One hundred and forty. Look at Ron Mullenkamp. When was Ron Mullenkamp born? I know, I know where we're going now. Okay, this is because these games are effective dead rubbers. Apart from forty-five, of course, Jamie required one hundred and forty. The table, which he might do with the aid of a one forty checkout. He'll at least try and leave tops here. One hundred. Does that? Do you know what star sign the 5th of November would be? I would not have a clue. 140. Jamie, you require 40. Still working Game his way on the fourth into play. the double, and he does Jamie get it Kellen. for leg four. Matthew Edgar alongside me, currently to throw dialing first. some Game on. £2.50 a minute line. If you've just tuned in, that's for a horoscope reading, by the way. 100. Okay, so it's a Scorpio. What, what, what would he have expected of the day? Try not to let the grudge holder within crawl out from its cave this 125. morning. 125. Dearest Scorpio, as the Gemini moon squares off the, with Saturn. Luckily, you'll have a chance 95. to shake off these funky vibes and focus on yourself when Luna and Mercury join forces this afternoon. I wonder who's... Mercury and Luna. 85. So you may want to take a few deep breaths in order to release negative emotions. They should have read this. Good vibes will flow 93. later in the day when Venus becomes attractive, bringing a warmth to the table that's perfect for intimate discussions. Just don't feel guilty about setting boundaries. If you want to unwind 100. before the day comes to a close. Cutting edge analysis from Matthew Edgar alongside me there. I wonder if Ron read that this 60. morning. Ron, you're requiring 91. Well, I have seen that little, what did they call it? Grudge monster or whatever come out of the cage from time to time. There it is, look. Put it back in its cage, relax. Take a few deep breaths. <laughs> 71. He's got time on his side. And I think that's actually one of the things that Ron does wrong. He, he gets angry at the wrong time. He's still in 96. a very good position in this leg. Ron, you require 20. He needs to box up that grudge monster. Not let him take over. A few deep breaths. Can you find the double? Well, never mind horoscope. Could be turning into a horror show on the outer ring here for Ron Mullenkamp. He does. Take a step back. Take a deep breath. Ten. Jamie requires the stars didn't align, and they certainly have aligned for Jamie Kelling in Group C. He's looking like he's going to win it. Maybe Jamie Kelling's the Mercury. Ron, you required ten. He did. I'm sure it said something about a positive interaction with Mercury. Game shot on the fifth well, positive for Ron. Ron Mullen gets Kelling. ahead. So Kelling here, if he holds his throw. He will win the group. Sixth leg. It's Jamie to throw first. Game on. If he's defeated by losing this leg, Alex Small 85. will win the group. Both players are going through. They're safe. They can't be caught. The last match between Joey Tenberg and Alan Norris will be dead rubber. One hundred and eighty. Trying his best to force Kelling into a second place finish. 60. I thought he was going to sign off with that boom that you mentioned then. Opening with the 180. 58. Would be something, wouldn't it? If you're not going to get through, you might as well have a nine data so you get a little highlight reel to take with you. 41. 
Do get involved on social media. Let us know what you think of the finals night field. It is now half full. And let us know who you think will join it tonight 99. when we return at 10 p.m. for Group B at MSS Darts. Horoscope readings are available by request. 100. Ron, you require 164. Also, time of the day, I'll also mention maybe the Group B people are thinking that Saturday night's lineup isn't half full. Maybe they're thinking it's half empty. 88. Well, Mulekamp might be about to get the job done. We'll chat a little bit more about tonight and Saturday 100. in the final Run match of the day. Ten Berg against Norris coming up. But if this goes, it's Kelling second and Alex Small winning the group. Wow. 68. Jamie, you require 115. And he will come back, Mule and 99. Camp. Ron, you require eight. And this to wrap up the victory and end Game, on a high. Shot and, and Ron, the match. Mule and Camp. Mule well, Camp. it was an inconsistent week for him, a 4 2 success in the end. But it is a significant defeat for Jamie Kelling. Look, he won't care. He's going through to finals night, but he is going through in second place. Confirmation that Alex Small wins Group C. Jamie Kelling finishes second. Ron Mullenkamp finishes third. In the end, just two points adrift of the top two. And Joey Tenberg and Alan Norris will duke it out in the final match after this. Hey, I'm Gary Ashburn, and I've been working in the world of collectibles and memorabilia for over 30 years. I'd love you to join me every Sunday night at 10 p.m. for Collectibles Guru, where we showcase awesome items from the world of sport, music, TV, and film. You'll hear the stories behind the genuine signatures and get a front row seat into the world of sport and showbiz. So tune in every Sunday night at 10 p.m. only here on Sporty Stuff TV. So, Ron ends with a win here at the Super Series. He gets the better of Jamie Kellen by four legs to two in our penultimate match of the day. Now, that means that Alex Small is our group victor. That has huge consequences when it comes to tomorrow night's final. And as you can see, he's done it by the solitary leg when it's come to legs different. So, Ron Mullenkamp finishing his campaign third on 12 points. Rounding off our Group C action for the week is Joey Tenberg and Alan Norris. It's their final runouts for this week here at the Super Series. And describing the action, Matthew Edgar and Chris Murphy. Thank you very much, Henry. Yeah, all just ticking the box at the end and trying to end in the best way possible, just as Ron Mullenkamp did. Fellow Dutchman Joey Tenberg from The Hague looking to follow... In the footsteps of his fellow Netherlands native, they'll both be heading back by plane or by train to Holland. And then Norris has a long trip to Scotland. It'll take him longer to get home than it will take them, that's for sure. But which one of them will have a little win to end? And look, I've asked you about the top end of the table, Matthew, whether it's important to finish first or second. First How leg, it's Joey it to throw first. That your last match Game is on. a win. You might not be playing anything competitive for a while is it a, a nice feeling or or do players just look at the the bigger picture rather than just the last match 100 i think i've got to give you two answers again here so i'll give you both elements of it what they should be doing is what we say in here all the time which is if you do win at least you're going away with a positive 30. sort of experience but I, I don't think realistically there's any sort of consolidation 60 or sort of bonus as such in 
not getting through and then try you've always got to try and find a positive in everything you do absolutely but falsify I think the main thing that they do here is do I qualify or not qualify that's the two questions it's a heads or tails scenario 59 I think Alan Norris has changed his darts twice already he changed darts after both visits I think he started with the big finish darts, though. And then he seven. needed to change. To... I mean, he needs the silver ones. They're the big scorers. Change his nickname to Chuck Anything, Norris. 45. Been chucked out of the tournament. Won't be in Saturday's action. It was going to be... 140. By his own admission, a real mountain to climb after losing all of his first five games. In this group yesterday, but he's won two today. Easy Could five. actually finish with a, a positive return. I talk about just having that that positive of winning your last match, but you could look at the day and go, actually, I won more than I lost. Forty-four. Joey required one hundred and fifty-two. Oh, that sat nicely for Joey. Oh, it was right in the corner 100. of the bed as well. Plenty of space to follow that one in. Something you said at the start, though, it's ticking boxes. I think Joey Tembo's probably ticked a lot of boxes. 33. Joey requires 52. So in terms of his performance this week. Game shot really the first to the Joey Tembo. Sort of attitude he came in here with where he just didn't know what to expect and he came in here with... Second leg, it's Alan to throw first. No real Game expectations. On. He was coming in to enjoy the experience, to be back on the stage again. He plays his darts locally now rather than on an international 100. circuit. He's more than happy doing that. He's got no real intentions to have a go at going for 96. the professional circuit again. And certainly without any form of backing, he tried all sorts throughout his career. He's set up his own business and he tries 100. doing it alongside work. He's, but you, you can't, you can't be doing the amount of traveling that you need to be doing. If you're living in Europe and traveling 100. over here, that's extra days either sides of the tournaments or you're going to be traveling through the nights, which means you get back, then you've got to go to work and the practice times don't come back because you're tired. Some people love that lifestyle. Some people just can't sit still. Dirt Van Dyvenbode, a great example, still works six days a week when he can. And that's just because he can't sit. You can tell that as well, 95. can't you, when you watch a play like Dirk? He's a big ball of energy, isn't he? Isn't it interesting story, though, that of Dirk Van Dyvenbode, and one that, well, we've got a game that isn't going to affect... The outcome of the group, we could just 97. talk about for a moment because Alan, you require one hundred and thirty-eight. Actually, really harm their career by their walk-on. <laughs> he fell over, didn't he, on a walk-on and caused an injury? One hundred and twenty-two. Joey requires sixty-eight. Where it was before that fall. Yeah, Mr. Edgar's opinion on that at the end of this 64. leg. Sixty-four. Joey Tenberg. Alan, you require 60. Well, things should have already happened. Kicks the hockey. Game shot on the second leg. A little system Alan seems Norris. to work for him. I hope he doesn't start to think that is the thing that works for him, or next time he comes, he might be beating up the Third stage. It's Joey to throw first. Yeah, what on that? Have you ever seen anything kind of like that? It was a 60. funny moment, but there has been serious ramifications for Dirk van Dijvenbode. And I think that his form has kind of fallen off a cliff since. 58. I feel like I have seen it and seen it a few times where people have sort of like hurt themselves doing silly things. But I just can't think of the examples off the top of my head. 41. No, you harmed your career once, didn't you, by uh, reading out horoscopes live 100. on 100. I actually broke my playing hand and then went and won the Challenge Tour event. Hmm. That's why I call myself the Kurt Angle of darts. Where the injured five. sportsman. Colin Lloyd once punched the dartboard.
41. In fact, I'm kind of a walking injury. I, I remember in the old venue in Southampton, I ended up breaking the coccyx, fell down the stairs. Ninety-seven. Look, I know you've been in the position when you've won a group here at the Super Series. That's well documented. But have you been in this position where you're playing 56. a match when you know that you're out of a, a group? And how, how difficult is it? Oh, it is. It, I don't even know how to describe it. 100. Because you still want to win because your pride won't let you just roll over. At the same aspect, it's, 96. it's hard Jerry to sort of 158. get that intensity. You feel the disappointment, and you're trying to play with disappointment. It's something you don't normally do. If you're disappointed, you're normally disappointed on the walk back to the hotel or the walk back home or in the car. Or... 98. It's never normally played in another game. 150. 150 was the start of the day shot. Alan Norris wanted to do it a special way there with three bullseyes. 98. Yeah, Alex Small Joey beating Joey Tenberg in the opening match with the 150 checkout. Massively significant moment. No score. Wow. Alan, you require well, Alan Norris 52. tried to go 150 on three bulls. Joey Tenberg's just tried to take out 60 with one dart as well. Doesn't work like that, Joey. Looking for an angle. Couple of kicks of the hockey. Game shot on the third leg. Found Alan Norris. A way to use that dart. A little chat about the, the event afterwards. But Fourth leg, it's Alan to throw I mean, Is that first? the kind of thing that can happen? Due to, no one's purposely not concentrating, but it's surely a la lack of mental edge. Yeah, it's just the intensity, isn't it? It just comes out of the situation a little bit. When you talk about that walk home, when you've lost, I know it's one you've done many times. Are you a are you a dweller? Or are you someone who can give it five, ten minutes and then it's gone? I think everybody needs that five, ten minutes. It doesn't tend to lag too long. 55. Sometimes a really painful one can lag, like when I first lost at the World Championships, because you think your whole life's works to get to that point, and when you lose that big game... That one, that, that was before Christmas. I didn't really get over it till January, to be honest. I'm a big fan of Christmas, and I remember I didn't really even bother with it that year. I didn't 96. really want to the tree out. But other defeats, you know, there was one when I played Robert Thornton in the UK Open, and 100. at the time he was the defending champion, he was in the Premier League, and I lost that by a leg. It was a very, very good game of darts. And that one lagged for ages. And what I did actually with that... Falsy fine. I got the programme. And Robert Thornton was on the pro front of the programme with the trophy. And I left it in my suitcase. So every time I opened my suitcase, I just saw his face all the time. Falsy fine. I just had him there until I beat him again. If you are interested, the next time I played him, it was 6-1 to me. There we go. 92. I don't know a single player that doesn't need that five, ten minutes. There's a very good expression. I'll only require 73. If you show me a good loser, I'll show you a loser. I'm a good loser. Oh, that doesn't work, that, does it? <laughs> 33. Well, Norris going weird, wonderful ways towards the end of his day. 140. Don't go the three Alan, balls and attempting 40. treble 11 on 73. But it's Game shot on the fourth him. lay. Alan Norris. In a way, I feel like I'm giving you the, the Paxman treatment here, but in a way is that fifth leg, it's a way of keeping your first. mind a bit sharp in a situation where, you know, the game doesn't really matter. So I'll try a few different things 100. to keep my concentration levels up. Yeah, everyone's got to find a way to keep those sort of focus and that concentration 100. because you will dip in and out of focus and concentration naturally anyway. So you need to constantly change things. Imagine when you're doing a presentation, you don't speak at the same tone, you don't stand in the same level. You mix all those things just to refocus the mind. 100. 
A great analysis, as always, from Matthew Edgar. We'll hear from again at the end of the show. 123. On what's happened. Alex Small and Jamie Kelling, the qualifiers from this group. Alan Norris has been 45. the man at the bottom of the pile. Joey require 138. After losing all five of his matches yesterday, but a much better day today. Joey Tenberg will look back and think what 53. might have been a couple of close encounters going the wrong way for him. We have three of our finalists 59. for Saturday. Joey Require, Jim Long, 85. Alex Small, Jamie Kelling. Fifty-three. Second dart was aimed at the bull. Would have left double eight. Instead, he's left double sixteen. Twenty-one. Joey required thirty-two. Sixteen. It looks like the game will go on a little longer, but Norris will try to tap on the shoulder of Joey here. And Joey he's done requires that. 16. We can't afford any mistakes on this visit. Game shot the fifth one. play. Joey Tenberg. Closes a gap to 3 2. Joey Tenberg, who will either finish on 8 or 10 points. It was sixth leg. It's Alan to throw first. The required game amount on. to get through and. As much as I hate to say it, Matthew Edgar's rule of three has been proved correct once again. Speaking of three. 180. All those in the same bed for Alan Norris. 83. 83. I actually think he's now thinking about which route shall I go for this potential nine data. Never seen that route before. 100. But it is a good closing out of the match. 81. Of the day, of the group and of the week for Alan Norris. Who, as I said, struggled yesterday. But if he does win this one, we'll have more wins than defeats on Friday. 100. No doubt he'll go for the bull if he gets the opportunity at the end of the 1-2-1. One, 45. Bit of a showman. Alan, you require 121. Well, he was trying to get the treble 11. <laughs> Having to work out what's left. It's 37, Alan. Still trying to work out. I think his opponent's just told him, but I don't think uh, Alan Norris believes him. 101. He was right. And it will be double 10 when he comes back. 94. Hasn't been the campaign that he would have wished for. He got off to a How slow start and it 20. was one he could not recover from. One that is almost impossible to recover from, but it has been a much better version of Alan Norris on Friday. That we saw on shot, Thursday. And, the match, and he signs Alan off Norris. with his third win of the campaign to take himself on to six points. It's a decent end to the week for Norris. He can go back to Scotland much happier. Joey Tenberg, well, the damage was done earlier on today with a couple of pivotal results going against him. And it is Alex Small and Jamie Kelling who qualify from Group C, which will be reflected on by Matthew Edgar alongside Henry Deacon. Yes, thank you very much, Chris. What a difference a day makes if you're Alan Norris. I hate to say I told you so, but I did tell you so at the start of the show. Do not write him off based on that one game and that one day. One day doesn't define a week. A week doesn't define the season. And you've got to look at what they've achieved and what they've got in the locker and what they can bring to the table. And we certainly know Alan Norris has got a lot more than what he's shown yesterday. 
I still think he's got a lot more that he can do on top of that, but he leaves here with a lot of positivity. He'll be happy with how he's played today, and he can now go back on that seniors tour and try and chase down one of those big events. Well, let's see how the table panned out in the end, because at the end of it, it was Alex Small who came out the victor just by the solitary leg on legs difference in the end, and it was a case as far as the group was concerned. It went all the way down to the wire. Yeah, and I think in a... You know, when we look at how the day's gone and how the group's gone, the most consistent players, the players that produce the baseline of performance more across on a static line, they're the two at the top of the table. It's the right two that's gone through. I think if we're looking at sort of Joey Tenberg and Ron Muhlenkamp, the next two in line there, we could have made a case for them, but we can only make a case for them on their A game. We saw their A, B, C, D games at times where the players at the top two was just sort of... I don't know whether we saw their A game. We certainly did from Alex Small at times. Mm. But what we did see is regular performance, which means you're competitive in all the matches. Yeah, let's talk a bit more about Alex Small then, shall we? Because as you say, group winner in the end. But you just get the sense going into tomorrow night, there is so much more in the tank. We know what his A level can provide and it still feels like maybe we're closer. We're not, we've not seen yet that true A level performance. We was getting very close to it at the start of today. Those first two performances were brilliant. He missed 16 darts at a double and still ended up with a 93 average in match number two. That was a really good performance there from Alex Small. And I thought we're really going to see the best of him come to the forefront. I think he just started to panic a little bit. I think when it became he had opportunities in lives and he sort of looked ahead and knew he had a little bit to do, but lots of time to do it, that little bit of comfort causes panic at times, especially when the prizes are on the line. And I think he just overcomplicated a simple situation. So do you think actually the knockout, I know there's a pool stage tomorrow, but the semi knockout element will help him tomorrow? Oh, absolutely. And we've seen him do really well here before, get all the way through to the final. I think he could be in that sort of similar situation again, depending on the groups break down. As for Jamie Kelling, he gets through, but I, f I feel like he's going into tomorrow night thinking about external factors, thinking about proving people right, where actually if you look at what he's done and what he's achieved here, you should be really proud of what he's done. I haven't seen these external factors. I don't know the external factors. I'm not, I scroll social media quite regularly. I'm very active on social media. I haven't seen these negative factors. I think these negative factors are fabricated in his own mind through insecurities mm. or doubts. Maybe he's looking around the room, like he mentioned, why am I here? I need to prove that I should be here. I think he looks at the players and the quality and the pedigree and the reputation of the players that are here. And maybe even in himself, he thinks, maybe I'm not in that field with these players. He is in that field with these players. He's had success in this field with these players. He's got through the Champions Week. He's won a week. There's some... Feet. You know, that's an achievement that some of the players with these big reputations have yet to achieve. And he's achieved that. And I still think he's looking for validation. In terms of his play, what would you assess his day in, in, on, in that factor? Consistent. And when you asked me at the start of play yesterday, what's going to win this group? Consistency was the key. Jamie Kellen, perfect example of that. You don't want to be doing 100 average one game, then averaging 72. You potentially can win with 100, you're going to lose with the 72. If you can get that baseline performance around about the 85, we saw the stat at the start of today that the running average for the group was barely the 82. So that will be enough to do it. Consistency is key to Group C. As to Von Moonenkamp, do you feel that slow start yesterday has come back to cost him in the end? I don't think he's even going to analyse this. A player like Ron Muhlenkamp is not going to look at it and try and break it down to see where it went wrong. He's just going to say this all went wrong and he's just going to can this into the, the backlogs, into the archives. And A week doesn't define the season. He's having a great season. It's not been a great week. He'll move forward. As for Joey Timberg, first time back in front of the lights for a fair few years now and he can be, once he walks away from this, happy with what he's done. I'd be very encouraged if I was Joey Tenberg. He's ticked a lot of boxes. I think he's proved a lot to himself. And I think he's probably made a few people remember just the quality that Joey Tenberg had. Some of the performances there was great. Some of it was a little bit irregular, but that's down to the rust and the amount of time he's been away from the game, being able to produce it match after match. He's, he's played 25 matches this week. We can pick out plenty, though, out of those 25 matches. He's going to go back to The Hague, and he's going to have a bit of thinking to do. He most certainly has. Well, we're going to be thinking a lot about tonight's Group B action, which gets underway from 10 o'clock. Sean McDonald is 
top of the pile going into day two of that particular group. But it's an absolute minefield as to who, who else may get through. Obviously, Sean on six points, not in a, a, a position to get through, obviously, himself yet. I really enjoyed watching Sean McDonald play last night. I thought he brought a lot to the table. Fallon Sherrick towards the back end of the group. At the start of that night, I was really concerned for Fallon Sherrick. I thought she was looking like she was in a position of no hope almost. Her performance was so poor compared to what we've seen. And then out of nowhere, she's found two really good polished performances. So interested to see if she can continue that form as well. So it's a night I'm going to sit on the yeah. fence and say there's more questions than answers at the moment. Splinters from prime time. I don't sit on the fence too often, but I'm going to be firmly on it until about game two this evening. Well, it has been a fantastic Friday of sport and it will round off with the culmination of Group B from the Super Series tonight. So do join us 10 p.m. on Sporty Stuff TV to round off all the action. Then we'll find out our final six qualifiers, uh, sorry, our final three qualifiers for the Super Six come tomorrow night. As far as Group C is concerned, it was Alex Small who was the big winner. Here we go then. It is final time and we can't wait. Seven legs potentially. And Matt Clark will have the darts because he won the bullseye in the practice room. Is Matt going to go back to Lancashire with £20,000? Or is Raymond Smith going to be on a flight in a few hours time from Heathrow Airport? Going back to Australia with a lot of Aussie dollars. In fact... I've just had a little bit of a communication from Chris Murphy, our commentary colleague, because he seems to think that Superman could be paid in crypto. <laughs> nice joke there from Murph, but I think he wants the cash. You could have sent me that one, Murph. I've run out of jokes now. No Absolutely joke this final, no jokes though. with these two players, but uh, it's Matt Clark who continues to impress. He's won the bull. But as Paul alluded to on the balcony there, I thought he made a very vital point. If anyone can handle the pace of Matt Clark, then it's the mental strength of Raymond Smith. And that's something that resonate, resonated with me when you said that, Paul, because I think the last game there with Scott Walters, he was beaten when all of a sudden Matt really slowed down in getting his darts out. And okay, he was affected first leg is Matt to throw first. Lesson learned. Game on. Final game. Who will win? £20,000. My life changed in Hull, the World Masters, when I won twenty five grand. The winner of this league won the five grand. The winner tonight gets twenty grand. The biggest prize in amateur sport. Over £1.17 million in prize money. The Motor Super Series will be paying out every year. And it all boils down to Series 2. These two players, who can emulate... What the fantastic corner Whitehead did. And just watching that play back early just brought a little bit of goosebumps and how much it meant for Conan. And it'll certainly mean an awful lot for one of these guys. One thing I've noticed about this audience tonight is just how attentively they've paid attention to all of the matches tonight. There's been no chanting, no singing, no boisterousness like the week before Christmas when Adam Warner won. But we've got two players here who are not local to Portsmouth, and maybe everybody's on the fence. All they want to see no, is won. somebody creating a bit of history for themselves. Yeah, proper daft fans are, and I, I think it's because one of the locals hasn't brought 20 or 30 people with them. I think the most was Scott Walters, who brought seven or eight. So it's just been a crowd who are here to enjoy the darts, and uh, we we'll certainly be enjoying a match like that from Matt. Sneaky good on the maximums this week has been... Matt Clark, whereas 
Raymond has been so close and yet so far to being the man at times this week. He did have a chance now, to win Group A against Justin Smith. He didn't win that match and had to play in Group B. And then he faltered on day two. He has not won a group all week, but neither has Matt Clark. He was second in Group C. And if you put those two things together, Fair, it means that these two are playing each other for the very first time in the Moda Super Series. And it's for £10,000. I always get the fame for Raymond Smith. He's got the mantras, I never dreamed of success. I work for it. He's just a big thinker Fair, who's worked eight. hard on his game. Worked now you might go on Psychology of the game. I've heard him chatting with players this week in the in the players area. He has a lot to say. He has a lot of thoughts about the game, whether you like it or not. I think one person I want to listen to is this guy. We talked about Alexander Merckx being in his game own. Show the first Matt Clark just continues Matt to Clark. do what Matt Clark does. And every time I've doubted him this week, and I will shake his hand and apologise if he wins this, because Second, like Raymond's maybe the first. focus, Paul, has been a, a little bit about the pace and how it has an effect on others. He's played some really good darts at times as well. Even myself on the balcony, I was 100. picking up Raymond Smith because I had him as a firm favourite. But sometimes when we let someone go under the radar, they're okay with that. And I think Matt Clark has been okay with that his whole career. Because at no, no time in his darting life has he been on anybody's radar in bold. Even when he made the England squad, the attention was about Painter, Beaton, Fordham, King. When he was in World Championships, 100. it was always about other people like Richie Burnett and Martin Adams. He made the quarterfinals of the World Championship on his debut season and didn't do any better in the next World Championships or anything after that. Hey, it's been a very interesting story, which for me has got a few dots after it because it's very far from finished. Ray Smith, he goes home as the runner-up. Does he go home happy? No, not at all. Hey, He's someone who gets on the Thank podium you, of order, in please. F1 and isn't happy unless it's at the top. He's an all-or-nothing kind of guy. He will take things on the chin. He will take the second spot if that's all he can muster. Doesn't mean he's got to be happy about it. Ten grand to the runner-up, twenty grand to the winner, but also just the respect of being the. Moda Super Series, Series 2 champion. An amateur dart right now. 100. And we start again on Monday. I've seen the names. I don't know if they've been announced yet, the names for, for next week, but some excellent players there. So all starts again Monday morning, 9.30. Sporty Stuff TV on the YouTube channel of Modus. If you do want to know the names, because I don't want to be the person to give them out, I'd like 43. you to go to our Raymond Twitter page at MSS Darts. Check it out. It will be released within the next 12 hours. Raymond Smith is going for a 116, and he's got at least two of these this week. He's been mastering these shots, but he's not going to get a shot at double 18 this time. 60. Three well thrown darts. Matt, you require 143. 60, but on a positive, it leaves a two dart combination. 143. Exhale equals confidence. Travel 20, treble 17, double 16 is the route he's attempting. Part one, tick. Part two, no tick. That leaves 66. So we're getting close to about 30 seconds of Raymond Smith. To 87. Think about this Raymond, 56. you require 56. He's okay with it. I was looking at him the whole time when Matt was going for that 143. He didn't show any signs of impatience. Double top. Big Got dart. A, absolutely. Game show and the he's the big man leg. for Raymond the occasion. Smith. One all. We're down to best of five to see who takes the title.
Don't look at Matt to throw first. Game on. Raymond Smith must break Superman in this match. It's kind of a big ask when you think about it. He has to be the general sword of this game. He's got to be the bad guy to take out the good guy. If indeed you are a reader of comic books and other paraphernalia in fantasy universes. 57. He's got something about him, Raymond Smith, that could work in a comic. A big bald head there. Steely eyes. Or maybe if Matt Clark takes his 100. glasses off, he'll actually look like Superman. I think we just need a bit of order there because one thing about a fantastic crowd, we have been in here in a few hours now. It's the one voice syndrome, Paul. I used to hate it. I could have, didn't mind 20th, 20 or 30 or 40 feet, 50 people shouting at the same time. Or even in some of the bigger crowds, it's just like a big swarm of bees behind you. But when you can hear one, two, it's an absolute nightmare. I'm not getting anything from either player as to 140. state discomfort or impatience. I'm loving the bubble that they're both in. Mac Clark slow, Mac Clark this, Mac Clark that. Mac Clark currently 103.5 average. 100. That's all that matters. Matt, you're recording 136. That high all week in a completed match. In fact, the only person not to have averaged over 100 all week from our finalists was Jim McEwen. Because we saw Adam Mould with a ton plus average earlier on tonight. The biggest average of the night was shared by Raymond and Adam because they have both had 101.9. Got to get another. He's got to get another 100. in a sense that 76 is not right, a gimme. 76. 76 is a finish that Dar players like. And very simply, I'd say to people, 20 is a must, treble 20 is a bonus. So look at the 16s. Just like this double top. He'll once again take his time and do things his own way. Raymond Smith is just behind. Game shown the, and the third last thing that Raymond Smith Matt wants to Clark. hear is game. And that's exactly what he did here. So it's back to the drawing board for Smith. Focus well, on Raymond winning your first. leg of darts. And start off with a minimum one treble visit. Every time he blocks it by hitting that small 20, for me, he may be better off 60. going to the 19s, but it's easy for me to say that from the commentary box, but I just get the feeling that there is another level for Raymond to find if he can use the board a little bit more in the way of flexibility. 19s, 18s. Four, he uses the four. 17s a lot. But that's predominantly with one dart left when that 60 bed is covered. That's because as you can see, those darts are very, very upright. And that was a much more inviting guide to get a 140. 140. Case in point. I always think sometimes when you're in a situation like this where tension, anxiety in your body has to be taken into consideration that when you're aiming for targets, you have the tendency of going low. It's just your body just 59. telling you something. And in this situation, I've seen myself whether it's on a TV stage, just going big, just going just above that treble, and you're thinking, wow, that's gone in like that. I didn't expect it to go there. What lovely angle that is to show you how his darts behave in the final third of the arc. 140. When they're going through the air, slowing down as they go to the board, that flight dragging it through the air. And 161 after nine is a very nice situation when your opponent is a good 237 behind. It's going all the way this, Paul, isn't it? 134. So. And the best Raymond finals 161. always do. A bit like seven days ago in week 12 of qualifying when John Henderson took out a ton plus finish against Niall Cullen, but a 161. He's going to be aggressive, obviously, and when he gets his shots, it doesn't matter where his opponent is. He's going to go for them. Very Martin Adams. Interesting with the, at least the 140 here. 
Oh, He'll keep it simple. All about that big number. Don't ever underestimate hitting that big number. Game show on the four player. Makes that second Raymond dot. Smith. It's now a best of five, Paul. What we have is like a situation first. which goes Game back on. 50, 60 years in this sport. If you're watching on Sporty Stuff TV, you might have been watching darts for the best part of half a century. 140. Loving shots like that. But if you cast your mind back to the 1970s and the 1960s, you might remember a tournament called the News of the World. And every single game in that tournament was first to two legs. 43. And that's exactly what we've got. First to two legs from here for £10,000. And when we talk about pressure, this is pressure, yes it is. But because they've played all week long, 100. they are ready for this pressure. They will never be more ready. It's just a question of who is more ready than the other. And right now, it's Matt Clark taking the full ascendancy in this game. Raymond Smith just showing that sign of distress, which we didn't expect. 125. The last two drafts will feel like gold dust once again. It just gives him an outside chance. But well, for Matt Clark, one treble visit here, and he has a huge advantage. Now, Matt Clark, it's in your hands. It's yours to lose now. One he looks impervious on his own throw. Old school darts from Matt Clark. He's basically telling himself, you can do what you want on your throw, but you're not having mine. Nine darts thrown and 81 60. left. Matt, if he McCoy, takes it out 81. in 11 or 12 darts here, He's telling Raymond Smith, you're not having my throw unless you hit a nine darter. Double 12 to be within one leg of the crown. Game That's an 11 darter at this time of the Matt tournament. Clark. That's world class wherever you are watching from. Incredible from Superman. And Smith now needs a brace like of legs. Otherwise, first. it's not meant to be Game for the guru. As Paul alluded to there, I couldn't have put it any better with his dart right now. Matt Clark looks unbeatable. And what you're doing, that it's a bit like a penalty shoot out in football. You're making the other team, you're going 1 0 up, 2 1 up. You're making 45. your opponent make mistakes. You're making your opponent score 45. Matt Clark's on a free roll, he will feel on this leg. It's not the end of the world if I lose it because I have the dart in the final decider. You hear your 45 and you think, come on, exactly the same. Give me a couple of trebles. 42. Doesn't take advantage. He lost the first game of the night. Four legs to three. He might win the last game of the entire thing. 103 games have been completed so far this week. Incredible when you think about 54. it. 54. We started in late October. It's early February. This is the culmination of that time frame. These guys won't be thinking about that because right now they are so much in the zone. It's all about 100. just playing in this little concentrated Portsmouth bubble to put their name on the end of our lips forever here at the Motor Super Series. He was going backwards in this leg was Raymond Smith. Whoa! there. Just when Matt Clark was thinking. As Raymond Smith hit the wall. That 180 is a massive moment. And I tell you what is also interesting. Matt Clark hope, has won each of his legs. 54. With ease. When it's three each, I am telling you, that last leg will have everything. It won't be as comfortable because the treble 20 will shrink. You start thinking. You see the finishing line. You're battling with yourself mentally. And Raymond Smith's thinking, how can I start this leg 60, 45, and then go 180, 140? That's mental strength right there. It's the ability to just stand at the back and breathe and start the process and find more fruit. Even with that 134, Matt Clark Raymond cannot leave a finish. 82. So it's 82 to take us the distance. So it's bullseye first start. 
And what a dart that is. That's a good feeling for two darts at double 16. He likes double eight. 66. No panic just yet. And what he'll do there is he'll just get himself in order. Sometimes it might be a bit of what he decides not to. For Matt Clark, he will take 30 seconds for these three darts. Just remember a little bit earlier that Raymond did miss a few key doubles no, in his second seven. game. Raymond, you'll be hoping that doesn't 16. happen again. It Game doesn't happen again. Sick flare. And Clark Raymond Smith. will take us to leg seven. Every leg in this contest has gone with throw. Seven that does not guarantee that this one will. First. But the way Game that Clark on. has performed in this final when he's thrown first has been nothing short of miraculous. 12 weeks of darts. 12 winners. Six 41. down to the finals night. Down to four for the semi-final, and now down to the last leg. If that doesn't sum up the whole thing about Moda Super Series, nothing does. It's a marathon, this thing. This is game 1,352 in this series, and it will be the very last leg of it. What did I say about Matt Clark? Who opened up 140, 180, he's regular on his throw. All of a sudden... One treble will feel like gold. 60. And all of a sudden you're creeping into treble seven. It takes someone like Raymond Smith now to hit a 140 here. And he might just do it. You can hear a pin drop in here. Everybody can hear the dart hitting the board. That 140 is one of the best he's hit this week. Maybe... The very best of the lot. I'm just trying to put you into the mind of the players. Matt Clark's now thinking, shake them off. What are you panicking for? You're winning your darts. 100. Herman Smith now taking the dart. It's now a 3 0 1 game. Nico, what is going on? He's going to switch. Oh, he's not. I was convinced he was going to go to the 17s because previously in the week, that's what he's been doing. It's a great standard of a final. There you can see three 180s in this final. And the averages are very, very 45. healthy. But Matt Clark falters. Raymond, you require 161. And Raymond Smith has got six from here to write his name into Moda Super Series history. Finally, I've called something right. I just had the feeling Matt Clark wouldn't have it all his own way after dominating his darts. 65. And that leaves a two dark combination. And Matt Clark on 255. Five. There's the breath. He'll feel like it's all the way, but you've got one chance, Matt. The biggest 180 of your life right now. And all of a sudden, now he's after to go downstairs. Now it's the connotations. If he stays there, he leaves a bogey. 100. That was dangerous. dangerous. That was a gamble. Raymond, 96. Is the gamble going to pay off, though? Because Raymond Smith has the first shot for the title. He's going to stay straight and go for double eight and go win it. Shot Raymond Smith is the man. The, the group Super thinks Series his way champion. to the end and he Raymond gets it done. £20,000 belongs to him. The gamble of coming across the planet has paid off and he will be on a flight back to Australia in a few hours time. And he doesn't even want to keep his own darts. He's given them to a fan in the front row, but now he can afford a new set. The biggest paycheck possible from the Motor Super Series belongs to the guru, Raymond Smith. Wonderful performance, averaged well, the confetti is everywhere. And unfortunately for Superman, he found his kryptonite in Raymond Smith.